What if Naruto was Sun's heir? Death's Guardian, A Hero's Peril Season 2 Part 5. Reading. Sun's Heir, Death's Guardian 2, A Hero's Peril by Engineer Forever. Disclaimer. I don't own Naruto or Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Chapter 5 As the other three demigods rejoined the blonde, Naruto chuckled sheepishly as his class sensei stared intently at him. Scratching the back of his head, ignoring Zephyr's head butting against his other hand, the blonde demigod said, Hey, sorry about that, Uruka sensei These are my friends I was telling you about earlier. Oh, so his teacher, said Apollo with a smile. He loved hearing about a hero's teacher. Usually it was Chiron, and this guy was named, Dolphin talk about a bonus. Still no Chiron though, Percy said. Well, Chiron is Chiron, you can't really compare him to others. It wouldn't be fair, Annabeth pointed out. The son of the sea conceded to that. I see, the man, Uruka, said with suspicion. He looked from Naruto and back to the others before grinning welcomingly at them. Well, a friend of Naruto's is a friend of mine. Pleasure to meet you, I am Yumino Uruka. Uruka Yumino, Naruto corrected, family name last. Darn you English, Leo said jokingly, raising his fist in a threatening manner. Percy readily joined him, completely serious in doing so. So his name is Sea Dolphin, said Apollo with a grin he shared with his uncle while Percy blinked in surprise. Strange, the teacher said as he processed the information. He then looked to the group expectantly. After a moment of awkward silence had passed, Naruto palmed his head and then gestured to each individual. This is Talia Grace, my girlfriend, Naruto said, retrieving his hand from Zephyr's head to put it on Talia's shoulder. Meet the teacher Talia, Nico chuckled. Better than meeting the father, Talia said and blew some hair out of her face as she scowled. Apollo pouted at that, man, that could be so much fun if they already didn't know him. But, oh well. The daughter of Zeus' eyes widened as she recognized the man's name, you're the scar-faced teacher that always overreacted to his pranks. Uruka sheepishly scratched the back of his neck, well, I guess. Though overreacting is a bit of a stretch. You tied me up for putting a whoopee cushion on your chair, Naruto deadpanned, making Piper and Jason snicker while Talia smirked at the thought. Hate to see what he would do to my kids, Hermes said with a sly smile on his face. If he caught them that is. You tried to use the distraction as a means of escape, Uruka countered. The blonde demigod opened his mouth but sighed as he failed to come up with a good retort. He settled on letting out a defeated, touche. Uh, excuse you, Uruka unsurely replied, not familiar with the word. Ah, uh, barbarians, Aphrodite said with a distasteful wiggle of her nose. No, touche is a French word that, never mind. I'll explain it later, Naruto groaned. He then gestured to the other blonde of the four teens, this is her younger brother, Jason Grace. Jason nodded curtly, uncomfortable in being within a foreign land limiting his response. He had his left hand in his pocket, grasping his coin Julius and rubbing his thumb over it to ease his nerves. Again, a foreign military base, Athena said, but looked disgruntled about agreeing with a Roman child. Uruka seemed to notice his tension, simply smiling in a welcoming manner, hello Jason San. And finally we have the charming Piper McLean, Naruto introduced the girl with a grin. Ha ha, Piper let out a mocking laugh. Oh but you are, Aphrodite smiled, in your own special way of course. Piper rolled her eyes before offering her hand to the teacher, who took it with a small smile. He opened his mouth to speak when the bells of the school began to ring making him groan as he retracted his hand. Let's try and meet up after school, maybe you could show your friends around, Uruka suggested. He bowed partially to the group before disappearing back into the building. Well, that was a bust. There goes my free ramen, the blonde mumbled as he started to walk away from the school. Talia stopped him, grabbing him by the shoulder and making him pout as she forced him to turn around. Slug, I am, oh. Be quiet you brute, Athena frowned to her war brother. We flew here to rescue you, Talia grit out, making Naruto wince at the reminder of her fear. With a glare, she continued, why does it look like you don't need rescuing? Now that you mention it, Annabeth trailed off. Ooh, you gonna be in trouble, 
Helios sang before he burst into laughter. Indeed Helios, indeed he is, Hades smiled. Ah, the misfortune of others, how it made him smile. Screw you, Naruto mentally retorted as he sheepishly laughed. Reaching up and rubbing the back of his neck, his other hand coming up to stop Zephyr from headbutting him again, the blonde said, guess you got my message then. Yeah, and your dad paid us a visit. He practically ordered us to come here. Talia continued with narrowed eyes. Now why is it that you decide to keep lying to me, Naruto? Hey, I never lied to you. Naruto's argument died as his girlfriend threw a thumb over her shoulder to point at Jason, making his point moot. Damn right it does. Well, it was more of withholding the truth. Apollo reasoned, but Talia just glared daggers at him. You know what, forget I said anything. Good, so, where would you like to be buried? Here or New York, Helios asked. Poetically by the pine tree, Nico said in dark humor that got his father to let out a snicker. No one asked you, Naruto shot back as he started to fumble with sentences. Talia's eyes narrowed. All right then, answer me this, why haven't you tried to escape yet? She inquired with a bit of bite to her voice. Oh man, Percy said, he could feel the dread. The other men in relationships winced. Poor Naruto, they knew him well. Uh, well, technically, I can leave whenever I want, Naruto replied with a small nervous laugh afterwards. Oh he is screwed, said Leo. Yep, Nico said, without a doubt, said Percy, as he and Frank nodded in unison. Jason just bowed his head, may he reach the place of heroes. Talia gave him a glare that could have rivaled her father's when angry. Hum, needs a slight bit of work. Zeus mused aloud, giving the look a critical review if it was holding such a standard to the son of the sun. Talia rolled her eyes, and then proceeded to start chewing him out, ranting about how she was forced to fly on an open chariot that she could have fallen off of while he was just wasting time making lunch dates. Piper and Jason watched with wide eyes, as the daughter of Zeus seemed to get bigger while Naruto continued to shrink under her scolding. Even poor Zephyr dimmed at the girl's wrath, ducking behind his terrified master. Smart horse, Hades quipped. Wow, go to Leah, Annabeth cheered awkwardly, unsure what to even say to be honest. Talia puffed her chest out in pride as Artemis seemed to smile the actions of the other Talia Grace, looking pointedly at her brother who rolled his eyes. Thankfully, just as Talia lost her first wind, Jason came to his rescue, why don't you tell us what happened before we got here? I could kiss you. Jason. Jason looked horrified while Piper seemed to snarl. He damn well better not. Though I think that would start a lot of rumors and or a fan club, the older blonde commented as he pointed at a group of giggling schoolgirls walking past them. Girls do like to see some guy on guy action now and again, Aphrodite said with a wicked smile. The guys in the room blanched, while the girls blushed at the insinuation. Talia glowered at them, making them rush past even faster. Piper nodded with other Talia's action, better deter those hussies. While Jason blinked in confusion. Wow, he's like Percy, Annabeth said with a quirked lip, getting Percy to pout at her. He wasn't that dense. Naruto saw this and continued, the girls in my homeland have either two settings when it comes to good-looking guys kissing, squeal in ecstasy or rage at the unfairness of the world. Sounds like yaoi fanfic writers all right, Apollo said. Seriously. There was so much slash fiction, you would not believe it. Sounds like a clique, Piper commented with a bit of annoyance. She didn't have the best experiences with cliques, even before her dad became a big screen star. That and the girls in cliques annoyed the ever living hell out of her, they were just a bunch of whiny high pitched idiots. You know it, girl, Piper said as she smirked with crossed arms, getting her mother to pout prettily. Wouldn't know. Naruto shrugged before stumbling as Zephyr butted him in the shoulder. Looking to his steed, Naruto said, Zephyr, stop doing that. If you want to stick around you have to stop head-butting me. Sorry master, the spirit apologized. Stop calling me master, Naruto mumbled as he pat Zephyr on the head. He can't help it, Apollo pointed out. Ahem, Talia cleared her throat to get her boyfriend's attention. Her arms were crossed and she was looking at him expectantly. 
The son of Apollo sheepishly laughed once more before sighing. All right, it went like this, Naruto began. Kiba glared at Naruto as he began unfolding a large parchment on the ground, why isn't he restrained? He's a traitor. Oh us, someone kill him already, Ares groaned. Did the world a favor. You want to personally get introduced to the dirt again? Naruto asked as his brow arched. The dog-like warrior snarled before returning to his task. That's right. Tell dog boy who's in charge, the war god nodded, little whiny bitch. Shikamaru took a drag of his cigarette while he watched Kiba unroll the large parchment. Last year we got an A-ranked mission. One that came with instructions on how to leave the elemental nations. How? Naruto asked, how did you leave? There was a cave at the base of the Hokage Monument, leading to the abandoned root headquarters. We found an exit there. Shikamaru explained as he placed a few rocks on the corners of the paper, next the exit there was a triangle. Continuity, Apollo muttered, so the labyrinth then, Annabeth said with pursed lips, which we assumed Danzo had carved into the wall and used to escape trial. Athena scoffed, as if some mortal could understand one of her greatest children's work. Trial, Naruto inquired curiously. It appears that Danzo Shimura blackmailed Itachi Uchiha into slaughtering his clan according to the evidence we found, Shikamaru mused aloud, making him a traitor to the state since he went against the direct orders of the Sandame Hokage. For a shinobi, that was a pretty stupid move, Naruto mused. Sounds like a ninja version of Octavian, Jason smirked, if only that could happen to the real one. Agreed, the older shinobi said as he exhaled some smoke, but I digress. The mission was accepted by Team Guy and Kakashi, with Guy's team staying near the employer while Kakashi's squad explored. Smart, get a lay of the land, Frank said. That explains a bit, Naruto mused, so they were away for what, months? It took them about five months to reach their destination, Shikamaru explained, and none of them remember the original route. The employer wiped it from their minds and the entrance was lost when the route tried to retake their base. Thankfully, Kakashi marked their exit point with a reverse summoning seal, which is where we arrived from. Where did you arrive? asked the blonde, prisoner, curiously. Please, Ares waved off, if he's a prisoner, I'm the god of rainbows and bunnies. Well, I'm sure father could help you with your new ambition, Athena smirked, getting her father to smile at that. Ares blanched and sent his sister a dirty glare for the thought. A small island with a large empty building on it, replied the smoking shinobi, it looked like a massive prison. Of course, Percy said dryly. Alcatraz, Naruto mused, making a note of the location of the seal's location before looking at the one that Kiba unfolded, so what's this then? A similar reverse summoning seal, but this one has a twin ready to go, Shikamaru said, Kiba, Akamaru, get Choji through first. Fine. Kiba snapped as he helped his partner get their large friend onto the seal. Their leader knelt down with a hiss at straining his injured leg, placing his hand on the paper and channeling chakra through it. The three on the parchment vanished in a flicker of light, making Naruto hum. So they can teleport, too. Leo commented lightly. Boring. Apollo mock yawned. I do it, like, 200% cooler. Impressive. Naruto admitted as he stepped onto the seal. He yawned and scratched his right cheek, can we get a move on before we get spotted? I mean, just because we're being quiet doesn't mean we can't be found. What, worried your plan might get ruined? Shikamaru sardonically asked as he pushed himself back onto his feet and stepped on the seal next to the blonde. Just shut up and do it, Naruto snapped. Like a good little prison bitch. Ares jeered. Shikamaru shrugged and began expelling chakra throughout the paper making them flicker before they vanished. Wait, Jason interrupted, what happened to that giant parchment? We didn't see anything when we searched the camp. A good question, said Jason as he frowned, what if they could teleport back? He did not like that. It's most likely still on the roof of the first cohort, Naruto replied with a shrug, don't worry, I smeared a line with my chakra before I fully vanished. They can't use it. Good, said Jason nodding in approval. Nice thinking on Naruto's part. So where did you end up? Piper asked. The blonde looked over his shoulder to a large white building. There, 
Naruto answered with a shudder, the hospital of Kanahagakur no Sato. A son of the medicine god, afraid of hospitals? Artemis asked, amusement tickling her throat. Maybe he didn't have the best upbringing, Apollo hissed out, remembering his son's vague past of being alone. Artemis winced, she had forgotten about that. As soon as they appeared in front of the building, Shikamaru turned to his, captive, and demanded, what did you do? I might have made it so you can't get back into Camp Jupiter, Naruto replied with a shrug. Shikamaru said nothing, crossing his arms. Behind him, four animal-designed, white mask-wearing warriors with light armor appeared, hands on the sword strapped to their back. The leading warrior, Owl, stepped forward and looked at Shikamaru, is this him? My curved stomp senses are tingling, Ares said look upon the scene with interest. Is that before or after you get your ass handed to you? Hephaestus asked with a mocking tone. Why you crip? Enough. Zeus waved off, stopping an argument before it could even happen. His war son did not seem to like it though, considering he sat back with his arms crossed and a scowl on his face. Mission accomplished, Shikamaru said in English, reaching into his flak jacket for his pack of smokes. He walked away, looking once more over his shoulder at Naruto, who was scowling in annoyance. L looked back at Naruto and switched to English dialect, it is by the order of the god I'm Hokage, Senju Tsunade that you come with us into custody for questioning. Yeah, they're screwed, Hermes whistled. Ha, huh, I've got two words for that, fuck, you. Naruto snapped back. The guys chuckled at the line, nice one. Owl reached out to grab Naruto's arm, only for Naruto to grab Owl's wrist hard enough to crack it. The blonde pulled Owl close and snarled, try to touch me again, and I'll snap your arm in half. Do it, Ares cheered as if he was watching wrestling, jumping up and down on his throne like a kid. I have orders, Owl retorted, gritting his teeth behind his mask. Sad fact about a soldier, the military brat of Jupiter sighed. Sucks for you then, Naruto replied as he tossed Owl's arm away. He turned to walk off when Owl grabbed his shoulder with the same hand. You'd think they would heed a warning, Hestia frowned at the passage. Sister, they are mortals, they do whatever they think is smart for them, Hera scoffed. Naruto stopped and looked up, no one ever listens. Before Owl could ask what he meant, Naruto had reached over and grabbed Owl's hand. Pulling Owl forward with a rough yank, Naruto dug his shoulder into Owl's armpit before he tugged roughly on the ANBU's arm. A second later, there was a pop and Owl released a scream of pain as his arm was dislocated. Nice one, Leo grinned, getting nods from the other guys, and Talia too. The blonde then wrapped his other arm around the already dislocated limb and bent the forearm over his own, earning a sickening snap. Now that just adds insult to injury, Hazel said dryly. Hades waved his Roman daughter off, nonsense, it was a perfect follow-up. Damn right, the war god agreed. Owl gave an agonizingly pain-filled scream, to which Naruto scoffed, please, at least it's still attached. Yeah, this is coming from the guy who had his arm and legs ripped off from monster dogs. Percy said dryly, you get up from that then you are some kind of crazy. Of course he didn't count since he had water healing powers. He shoved Owl off of him and let the Anbu stumble backward to the ground. His team tensed and moved to attack when Naruto looked at them. A grin spread across his face and he asked, Do you really want to try and take me on? Don't just stand there. Owl snapped as he back up to a knee, arrest. Seriously, all they do is yap yap yap, Ares mocked, by order, just kill them. It would make it quieter just bloodier. Stuff it. Naruto interrupted the Anbu with a thrust kick to the chest, kicking him through the side of the white building. Did he just Spartan kick a guy into a hospital? Nico asked blinking. I I think so. Piper answered, equally shocked. Oh, good, I thought I was the only one that saw that, so friggin cool, the Ghost King smiled. I know, Leo agreed instantly. When the smoke and dust cleared, the blonde demigod was satisfied to see Owl lying on his back on the ground, people gathering around him. Naruto turned back to the Anbu and asked, Again, do you really want to take me on? Please, do it you maggots. Ares, enough of your whining, Hera said crisply, 
Honestly, where did she go wrong? The three Anbu looked ready to attack but were held back by the arrival of another. The man had gravity-defying silver hair and his face was hidden by a mask and his headband adorned with the same kanji that Shikamaru, Kiba and Choji had on theirs. The newcomer looked at the Anbu and said, I've been put in charge of this, you are all dismissed. Go check on Owl. The Anbu shared looks with one another before vanishing in blurs. The man shook his head before turning to Naruto and asking him. What's up, Naruto? Kakashi asked as he appeared in a cloud of smoke, a new book on Greek mythology in his hands. So, he is still reading up on us it seems. Athena mused. Artemis frowned, still finding the book offensive like her other had. Jason and Piper looked surprised at the arrival while Naruto looked annoyed at being interrupted. You, Talia exclaimed with shock and anger, getting the younger demigods to look at her. Ignoring them she reached for her mace canister and prepared for a fight, you're the creep that attacked us outside of Mount Othrus. Wow, nice greeting Talia, Percy said, smirking at his cousin. Oh, shut it water boy. You'd freak too seeing someone that attacked you once before right there in front of you, said Talia with a frown. True, Percy said. Actually I didn't do anything, Kakashi corrected as he looked up from his book. Scarecrow man speaks the truth. Leo nodded, getting some looks for his comment. What, his mask and hair are cool. His eye locked on Zephyr and calmly he said, I don't know if you know this, but your horse is on fire. I like him. He has a good sense of humor, Poseidon chuckled. He's a special kind of summon, Naruto explained before asking, is she finally ready to see me? She's managed to sober up a bit, Kakashi replied with a shrug. Ooh, Dionysus said, wondering who it was. But you should be warned that her aides are still with her. Well, this is going to be fantastic then, the blonde groaned. He looked at Zephyr apologetically. I need you to stay out of sight for a bit, Zephyr. Go away to top that building. Zephyr followed his master's point and then returned his flame-filled gaze to Naruto, nodding. Zephyr whinnied and reared back before shooting off into the sky, a trail of fire behind him. Kakashi blinked and shrugged, he'd seen weirder than a fiery horse take off into the sky when he was in the war. How many wars have they had? None that we would know, Athena told her brother blandly, honestly. That. Dot was awesome, Piper said with a grin. Jason nodded and Talia begrudgingly agreed that the takeoff looked better when not part of it. Give her a bit, she'll warm up to him. No she won't, Talia quipped to the archery god. The blonde sighed and pinched the bridge of his nose before looking at Kakashi. Let's go get this over with, Naruto said, getting a nod from his former teacher. Kakashi turned around and led the four to a large red building with a pale orange tiling rooftop. It was about 60 feet in height and rounded, giving it a width of, once more, about 60 feet. There was a large circle above the entrance with a strange symbol carved into it. Naruto caught their curious gazes at the symbol and explained, the kanji for fire, you'll see it a lot because that is the name of this land. Hi no kuni, Talia muttered, I remember you telling me about it. I just never expected it to be so, so green. Grover would love it there, Percy mused. Seems so lush, out of touch from pollution and just sheer nature. Annabeth whispered in awe. It was named such for the weather, Kakashi answered while turning another page in his book, always warm, usually clear skies save for the occasional clouds. Hey, and since we have no power there, Hades mused, someone can't have a fit there. I do not have fits all the time. So you admit you have fits. Blast you. Zeus simmered to his laughing undead brother. Here we are, Naruto said as he put his hand on the massive building's door and pushed it open while Kakashi got the other. The three newcomers were surprised that after the door was opened there was a large wall not ten feet from them. Adorning the side of the wall were five large pictures of four men and one woman, more of the strange language written beneath the frames. This is the Hokage Mansion, Kakashi explained, each Hokage lives here during their role as village leader, and depending on the person it can be either a short stay or one for the rest of their life. Cool, my mortal pad, Apollo grinned. Too bad you, died, huh, Hermes grinned to him, getting the sun god to frown at that. True, 
That must have sucked big time. From left to right are the first to fifth Hokage. First, Hashirama Senju. He doesn't look as serious as he does on the mountain, Naruto mused, referring to the smiling face that greeted every newcomer to the Hokage mansion. Next came his younger brother, Toborama Senju, Kakashi said, gesturing to the image of the white-haired man, and no, he wasn't old. That's just how his hair was. It's normal for people here to have strange colored hair, Naruto explained to the confused Piper and Jason. Talia recalled the other shinobi she met six months prior and shuddered at the thought of the girl with pink hair. That was natural. Those poor, poor mortals. Aphrodite frowned for their saddening genes. Just goes to show you, not all of them could be pretty. After him came the first student, Hiruzen Sarutobi, the aloof shinobi said as he pointed at the slightly older looking man with a pointed goatee. Naruto smiled fondly at the picture, remembering the last few years of his pseudo-grandfather's life. So he raised Naruto huh? Hazel asked, seems like Chiron in a way, Annabeth said, he has a similar look in his eyes. Percy pursed his lips in thought. Now that she mentioned it, yeah, he did. And then came, Naruto's dad, Talia cut Kakashi off, glaring at the blonde with a small smile on his face. Feel the blood rage Apollo, feel it, Hermes whispered in a mock menacing tone as Talia snickered. Not cool, that was Roman's side, not my fault, Apollo said with a frown. How many times did he have to say it? Jason whistled in awe while Piper gaped. The daughter of Aphrodite looked to the son of Apollo, getting a shake of the head, stating that now was not the time for answers of the Greek variety. Curious little thing you are, the girl's mother smiled, the daughter giving a sly one back. I was going to say my sensei, Kakashi grumbled, making Talia swivel her gaze to him in surprise while Naruto's eyes rolled. You had someone who knew of you, and yet they still didn't tell him of your mortal guise. Athena asked, a frown marring her face. Apollo frowned as well, not liking it at all. Something that would have been awesome to know while training, the blonde said, getting a deadpan look from the man. Bit of an ass move really. Nico said, shaking his head in disapproval. You wouldn't shut up about it if I had said anything, retorted the silver-haired masked man. Naruto stuck his tongue out childishly at the accurate reply. Son of Apollo everybody, ha ha Hermes, ha ha. So what if he had idolized the fourth before discovering his true identity? It wasn't that bad. Apollo brightened up and then dimmed. Ah, Naruto said he had. Ah man. And the last one, Jason asked. Kakashi cleared his throat and prepared to speak when a woman's shout in a foreign language cut him off. They, re late is waiting for us, Naruto said with a smirk. He gestured to the stairs on the left and the four followed him up. After what felt like an hour of stair climbing, Kakashi finally broke away from the layers of stairs, leading them to another set of double doors that he opened. What was revealed made the three foreigners blink in surprise. It was a massive office with a couch to the far left, the same images in the welcoming hall on the wall above it. On the opposite wall was a large bookcase filled to the brim with its namesake. The large windows straight ahead of them gave a fantastic view of the large city-like village, which seemed to go on forever from where they stood. In front of the windows was a desk and standing on either side of the desk were two women. My office of Awesometude is amazing, it even comes with girls. Apollo praised, getting hit on the arm, ow, seriously, stop that arte. Then stop being a pig. You just love to set those high hurdles, don't you? One looked very plain, yet pretty in the same manner that most secretaries did. Two kind black eyes looked in their direction, matching her shoulder-length black hair. She wore a solid black yakuta with white lining. Sandaled heels covered her feet and in her arms was a dot pig wearing a pearl necklace and vest. A pig accessory, honestly, Aphrodite said with a grimace, as if the yappy dog fad was bad enough. That was hardly the strangest thing, as the other aide had bright pink hair, cut to the same length. The horror, the girls shivered, even the goddesses did so. Talia immediately recognized her as one of the four that had attacked them outside of Mount Othrus and it put her on edge. In order to keep her cool and not attack the pink-haired weirdo, she shifted her gaze to the last woman at the same time that Piper and Jason did. 
The three demigods from the United States felt their eyes widen at the sight of the woman that sat behind the desk. She had pale blonde hair with shoulder-length bangs, honey-brown eyes that were narrowed in their direction and in the center of her forehead was a purple diamond. However, what surprised them the most was everything below her face, primarily the massive mounds on her chest. Oh yeah, the big bazonga babe, Ares said, leering openly. Those with significant others turned away as fast as they could, but still had their others glaring at them. The image in the hallway was cut off at the Hokage's necks, leaving her chest size a mystery. So the sight of the pale blonde woman's watermelon still thankfully covered by her grey kimono and green jacket threw them for a loop. Piper was wondering how that was anatomically possible, considering their size in comparison to the woman's head was only less by a margin. Seriously, how? She asked her mother. Genetics. As even the goddess wondered how the woman didn't have chronic back pain with those things. Talia was too shocked to even think coherently, though she did wonder what Tsunade did to get them that big. Breast envy Talia, Annabeth teased, getting the hunter to sputter. No, Talia retorted, her cheeks red with embarrassment. Jason, being a hormonal young teenage male, just thought one word as his face lit up bright red, damn. Zeus nodded to his son, he could understand his reaction. Sadly Piper didn't and slapped Jason upside the head. Ow, Piper, other me, the blonde hero said desperately. But Piper just huffed, turning her head to the side. The three were shaken from their stupor when the woman grabbed the stapler on her desk and chucked it towards them. Naruto's hand shot up and caught it before it could hit him in the face. Well now that is plain rude, Aphrodite huffed, trying bruise up that handsome face. Lowering it with a look of annoyance on his face. Tossing the impromptu weapon back, the guardian asked, what did I do to earn a stapler being thrown at my face? You know damn well what you did, the woman retorted with a glare, explanations are well overdue, brat. He's like, 22, how is he a brat anymore? Percy asked, well, she did know him when he was younger, so maybe it was just a name for him. Annabeth rationalized, the sea child shrugged. I have a name, Ba-chan. Naruto shot back with a frown as he crossed his arms. He he, he called her grandma. Apollo snickered childishly. Tsunade narrowed her eyes, all right then, Namikaze. Uzumaki, corrected the blonde as he stepped further into the room. Still doesn't seem to like your mortal aspect's name, Hermes mused. Meh, said Apollo with a shrug. Let him feel more connected to his mother I say. Talia, Jason and Piper all exchanged glances before following his example and walking in. This earned the woman's attention. Who the hell are they? She asked. Wow, rude much, Piper muttered with a frown. Naruto rolled his eyes, they are my team. You already have a team, idiot, the pink-haired woman shouted. Seems his old crush has trouble letting go of her punching bag. Ares chuckled. Apollo frowned at this along with Talia, though it was mainly at Naruto being called an idiot when he really wasn't. While the woman behind the desk and the other aide gained baffled looks. That team broke up more than ten years ago, Sakura, Naruto snapped, when the Uchiha shoved his hand through my chest. Yeah, that is a deal breaker. Jason frowned, for a teammate to attack and impale a companion like that. Was this girl delusional at still thinking that is a team? But you, just save it. I'm not here to talk to you, Naruto cut Sakura's retort off before looking at the woman behind the desk. Standing in front of the desk at attention, Naruto said, I have to resign. Finally, Apollo cheered, get these annoying people out of your life kid, good work. Ah, I wanted to see more ninja onage. Ares frowned like a child. You could hear a pin drop twice over it became so quiet. The dark-haired aide was the first of the four natives to recover, and Naruto you can't be serious. Dead serious lady, Leo grinned, he liked Naruto, he was just badass at times. The blonde demigod sighed and felt the depression build up within him as he addressed her. Dead serious, Shizun, Naruto said to the woman, making her fumble her arms as she nearly dropped the pig, careful, don't drop ton ton. Still think the pig is ridiculous. The lady of doves huffed. Explain. Now, Tsunade curtly said once she recovered from her shock. 
One can resign if he wants, Jason frowned, they don't have to really give a reason. It's too difficult to explain and you wouldn't believe it if I told you, the blonde sighed out, just let me resign. True, these mortals wouldn't. Demeter frowned, and she loved the place they were at as well. So rich with nature. It's not that simple, brat. Tsunade snapped, eight years ago you would have never said the word resign. Hell, I was under the assumption you didn't know what it meant. Ouch, Percy winced, why do they all think he's some kind of idiot? Well, maybe he didn't take things seriously until he died. Annabeth supplied, something to reflect on. She told him. Percy pouted at the minor jab at him. Okay, he didn't study. Whatever. I know what the word means. Naruto said in annoyance as he put his hands on her desk, Gods damn it, do you know how hard this is for me? I don't want to sever my connection here but you are forcing my hand by sending people after me. I have a different contract I am obligated to fulfill, and damn it you are going to sign your own death warrant if you keep trying to take me away from it. True, if they got in the boy's way to save my daughter, I would very well kill them. Hades said with a matter of fact tone. What the hell are you talking about, brat? Talk with some sense, Tsunade demanded. Naruto grabbed at his head with a groan before recomposing himself. Taking a deep breath, the blonde calmly said, I am Naruto Uzumaki, son of Apollo, god of the sun. Athena shook her head with a frown, they wouldn't understand, their mortal minds wouldn't accept it. She sighed out, that was the problem with today's age. The room was once again speechless. There was a thump and Piper turned to see Kakashi with his book holding hand empty, the book on the ground. Snickers broke out at that, so stunned he dropped his book. Well, his teacher was a god, that must be a shocker for him, said Hermes in support of Kakashi. He was a cool dude. Well, Chiron had one, two, Apollo chuckled out, he handled it just fine. Chiron is a centaur, PSH, details. The first to recover this time was the Hokage, who grabbed the blonde's shirt and pulled him down to look her in the eye. Who told you that load of bullshit? Tsunade asked with narrowed eyes, your father's name was Minato Namikaze. Hey lay off the good sexy boob lady. Apollo said in a serious tone, but Artemis still slapped him for slipping in the remark of the woman's chest. Which was an alias of Apollo's, replied the blonde, I told you that you wouldn't believe me. Then why bother saying it? Nico asked in a dry tone. Well, he had to say something, Hazel trailed off, but sounded unsure. Because it's a load of horseshit, snapped the Hokage. Hey, Poseidon said sternly, don't bring the horses into this. Naruto glared at her, since he couldn't lie and that even trying to would get him even further interrogated, and she glared back in disbelief. The two remained silent after that exchange, glaring at each other. Their contest of wills was broken when the doors were thrown open and two old people, a man and woman, entered. They both had long white robes on and the scowl of a tired warrior on their faces. TCH, just relics that are too old to fight. Ares said, boredom in his tone at seeing the aged, warriors. The woman smiled lightly in Naruto's direction before looking to Tsunade. Congratulations Tsunade-sama, you've brought our village's hero home. Now we must prepare him for. Hold it there, grandma, Naruto interjected with a scowl, last I checked this was a private meeting. A meeting for what? The woman asked briskly. My resignation, Naruto nonchalantly replied. Nice bomb drop, Percy snickered, they do seem the type to part of the politicians of the place, Annabeth observed. Very true, Athena nodded. The few warriors that become that old do tend to stay back for the political side of a military structured home such as this Konoha. Please, Ares rolled his eyes with a sneer. This is just the old men giving orders and the young men dying on said orders, nothing but chumps too weak to pick up a weapon anymore. The two looked aghast at the sentence before the old man stepped forward, now see here, you fool. You are our Jinchuriki, our strongest defense and like your mother you will do your duty. The females bristled at the gall of the man as Apollo fumed, eyes balls of light in anger at this pathetic crept of dust saying that. Wait, that means that Naruto's mother was also a Jinchuriki, right? Leo asked. Seems so, Annabeth frowned. 
What a terrible thing to do, forcing a demon into someone. You do not talk about my mother, snarled the blonde, focusing his killing intent on the elders, you don't even think about my mother, do you understand me? You tell them kid, the sun god agreed readily. We have ways of making you cooperate, the man said. Oh please, lame, Hyper rolled her eyes, that was such a cliche line. He looked to the soul shinobi in the room and said, get Yamato in here. So he can do what? Grow a tree around me. What good would that do? Naruto retorted with a snort. Demeter sniffed at that, but did agree, how was growing a tree going to make the boy submit to them? He grabbed the edge of his shirt and lifted it up, revealing his bare and toned stomach to the room. Aphrodite let out a wolf whistle while Artemis groaned. The blonde then, see this. I'm flaring my chakra and nothing is showing up. What does that tell you? Where is the QB, boy? The old woman demanded once she had recovered from her stunned state. It is the weapon of Kanahagakur no Sato. The hell it is. I don't remember hearing about anyone other than an Uzumaki being able to handle the QB. If it should belong to anyone, it's me. Well, more like his mother's family, Athena said. But with him being the last of his line, the demon would fall into his possession. He rounded back on the old man and jabbed his finger into the elder's chest with each word that followed. In short, fuck, you, perfectly said, the war god nodded. Hestia disagreed with the wording though, a bit uneasy at having to say it. You don't have the right to do this. The power of the Kyubi no Kitsune belongs to Konoha. The elder retorted after stumbling back a bit. We were given it by the Shodai Hokage. Bitch bitch bitch. The aggressive son of Zeus yawned. Seriously, I thought they were warriors, but all they do is shout and complain. He didn't have the right to disperse the biju to begin with and probably regretted doing so after it happened. In my opinion, the QB belongs to whomever it wants to belong to, and if you can't accept it then tough tits. Naruto shot back, his bracelet gleaming unnoticed in the bright room. Well, the demon seems happy about that, Apollo said. The demigods were standing in a stunned silence, hyper at the way the blonde continued to rant and the two grace siblings at how volatile Naruto could be when he wanted to. Never seen Apollo when he had a temper tantrum. Artemis chuckled with mirth. Apollo pouted at her words. Funny, I remember someone crying when she ruined her first knee-length tunic. Apollo said snidely. Artemis glared heatedly at him. So there, Naruto finished by crossing his arms and sticking his tongue out at the two elders, giving them a raspberry. Hermes just turned to his brother a quirked lip saying all that needed to be said. Oh shut up you cow thief. The others in the room resisted the urge to palm their own faces at his sudden jump to a childish response. The elders on the other hand were furious, both red-faced and embarrassed at being refused a vital asset. The woman began again, Namikaze-sama, we need the QB in the upcoming war. And he is busy with one dealing with the fate of the world, not some pathetic country-to-country -country squabble. Athena dismissed, stupid mortals, the boy had much more to worry about. Don't make me kill you, because I will if you keep pushing me, Naruto cut her off. Kid, stop saying and start doing, Ares said with a scowl. Oh stop your incisive whining, Athena told him. Make me, was the childish retort. I'll make what I did to Danzo look like child's play in comparison. The two immediately narrowed their eyes, you lie. Best part is, he can't. Apollo chimed with a smirk. Nope. Naruto shot back with a smirk as his unique eyes gleamed, I blew his head the fuck up. It was all over the walls, brains, eye, sharing an eye. And it was spectacular. Ares praised openly. Best headshot, ever. That certainly got the two to frown as they quickly left the room, Naruto's threat still hanging in the air and fresh in their minds. Losers. Nico snickered. The rest of the silent room stared at the tense blonde like he was a bomb waiting to go off. After the doors closed with a slam, Naruto turned back to Tsunade and pulled the metal clip from his belt, slamming the insignia face down into the Hokage's desk. I resign, Naruto said firmly. Badass moment, right there. Leo chimed with a grin. True, Frank nodded. Tsunade stared down at the forehead protector in horror. When she got word that Naruto refused to come home, she wouldn't believe it. 
She never once expected him to be serious about this, that maybe it was all leading up to a grand prank of some sort. As funny of a plot twist it would be, sorry lady, Hermes said with a shake of his head. When he started to rant nonsense, Tsunade understood that it was happening, that Naruto was severing his ties with the village. Still, a part of her wouldn't back down. In a desperate attempt to keep a strong warrior, and a pseudo son. There's that familiarity, Annabeth said, so that was why they seemed so close. In her village, Tsunade looked back up at the whiskered teen and asked, What about your dream to be Hokage? Oh, Zeus hummed in interest, his grandson wanted to be the head of his state. As he brought his hand back, Naruto stiffened at the question. His unique sun filled eyes gave her a look that made Tsunade realize this was a lost cause, and his words only cemented that. I wanted to be Hokage primarily for acknowledgement, so that people would see me and not my burden. I have found a way to achieve it outside of here, why would I want to leave that behind? Damn right kiddo, Apollo smiled softly, getting supportive nods from all the demigods and some of the other gods. With a smile that lit up the room he continued, I even found someone that will go against the odds to stand at my side. Someone I could spend the rest of my life with. Ah. The female's cooed as even Talia flushed brightly. Talia's cheeks dusted pink, but a small smile came to her face. Hmm, seems she's not that mad. Shut it Annie, Talia pouted, but dang, that was a good line. She was still mad at him, there was no doubt about that, but that line. Her knucklehead could be real smooth when he wanted to be. Ah, her knucklehead, Aphrodite cooed, sending a wink to Ares who grinned wildly back. Everyone blanched at the sign of affection. I suppose there's no delaying it any further, Tsunade reluctantly sighed out, Sakura, go and get Jen and Uzumaki's file. Bout time, said Hephaestus, as even his patience was wearing thin. Tsunade-sama you can't seriously be thinking about accepting his resignation, Shizune said with wide eyes. Sakura had a matching look on her face, whereas Kakashi, who picked his book back up, had gained a small look of depressed acceptance. Still a cool dude, at least he can accept it, Hermes said with a nod. He had hoped that Naruto might want to return, but as long as the blonde was happy then there was nothing more he could ask for. And that is a good teacher, Percy smirked, Hermes was right, Kakashi was a cool dude. The god I'm Hokage shifted her gaze from the blonde to her loyal aide, do you think I want to? Unfortunately, the law is the law and is a genin. Naruto has the right to resign from his post without question. Thought so, Jason said. Looking back at the blonde demigod, Tsunade asked, Is there anything else, Uzumaki-san? There is one more thing, Naruto said as he reached into his back pouch and pulled out a vial of green and black liquid. Placing it on the desk, Naruto said, I need a cure for this. So she is the shadow slug huh? Hades said, wondering if she could cure Bianca. Oh, she'd better. You have balls to ask me for a favor after what you just did, you brat, replied the Hokage with a frown, why should I waste my time on a little vial you claim has a disease? Because you will, Hades muttered in a menacingly. Do your job boy. Nico nodded to this, the woman better be able to. You owe me, simply replied the blonde. Ah, the beauty of favors. Hermes smiled, best business idea ever. And how the hell do you figure that? Tsunade snapped, making the demigods cringe at the anger and look at the blonde. Surprisingly, he kept his cool rather than explode like he did moments ago. Would you even be in this village if it weren't for me and Erosani? Naruto asked as a brow quirked. Oh, so she only got to that position thanks to Naruto and his teacher, the wisdom goddess said with intrigue. Don't you bring him into this. And that's irrelevant to the point. Tsunade argued. Not really, a favor is a favor, no matter how long ago it was. Hermes said in a stern tone. Is it? Naruto asked as he looked to Shizune. Shizune, if we never came and retrieved you and Tsunade, where would you be in ten years? Enjoying a free life without worrying about debt collectors catching up to you and your hungover teacher. So a drunk and a terrible gambler, the god of the sport mused and turned to his brother. Hey D, I think I found your dream girl. Dionysus glared at his son brother, not amused at all by the comment. W well, 
Shizun shifted uncomfortably as all eyes went to her. In defeat, she hung her head and softly answered, No. Bam, Onage, Leo smirked. Naruto looked back at Tsunade, getting an annoyed growl from the pale blonde. Before either of them could speak, Sakura interrupted and said, Shisho doesn't have to do you a favor, idiot. Oh someone muzzle that thing already, Aphrodite gripped in distaste. The blonde demigod snapped a glare onto her form, I wasn't talking to you. Weren't you supposed to be getting my files anyway? Yes, Shu, Shu, the Lady of Doves said with a wave of her hand. Sakura looked livid, but a stern glare from Tsunade, who realized that Naruto had a point with his question, had forced her to keep her mouth shut. As she left the office in a huff, Sakura sent brief looks of anger to the three demigods, considering it their fault that Naruto had changed. More like moved on and being happy now, bitch, Talia spat out, glaring at the image as well. With the pink-haired woman out of the office, Naruto looked back at Tsunade and said, if there is anything left of the Uzumaki in you, you will help me. If not for your kin, then for the young girl who is stricken with this disease that I promised I would cure. Tsunade's eyes narrowed, a girl, it's her blood that is set before you, the blonde informed the medical genius. Huh, scratch that D, I think she might be perfect for me, Apollo smirked with a leer in his eyes. You'd better not be making this up, crisply warned the Hokage. Now now, my kid wouldn't lie about a medical issue, not cool at all to do. He can't lie in general to save his life. Hermes chuckled, getting a mock glare from his older brother. I swear on my mother's name that it is a patient in need of desperate help. If it were anything else, I wouldn't have bothered coming back, Naruto replied. He hoped the play on Tsunade's maternal instincts and her pride as a doctor would sway this in his favor. Smart move, Annabeth nodded. If not, well, then he can kiss Bianca goodbye as well as his soul for eternal damnation. Hades was very, very protective of his children and very bitter to those that failed him. Very true, Hades attested, he would do that. He wanted results, not failure. Tsunade kept a hard gaze locked on Naruto before looking down at the green liquid within the vial he had set before her. She grabbed it and held it up to her eye with a scrutinizing gaze before looking back up at him. I'll do it, Tsunade said as she put down the vial and pointed at him, but this is the last thing I'm doing for you, brat. Naruto smiled in relief and bowed his head, quietly so that only the woman before him could hear, he affectionately said, Arigato Bachan. Yeah, yeah, just get out of here before I change my mind, waved off the woman. Naruto stood upright before turning to leave, he nodded to the demigods and they followed him, making Tsunade's brow furrow. After the four teens had left the room, Tsunade said to the man reading in the corner, Kakashi, keep your eye on them. They have something to do with this. Well, it would be natural to keep an eye on the group of strangers, said Athena begrudgingly. Even Jason nodded in agreement with that. The older girl was one of the few team Kakashi faced in the foreign land, chimed in the Jonin informatively, she and Naruto seem close. They be dating man, Apollo said with a smirk. Talia wouldn't stay mad at him forever he just knew it. They were such an awesome power couple after all. And Talia was all about power, hee <laughs> hee. Watch them, Tsunade said as her eyes went back to the vial in her hand. The silver-haired shinobi vanished in an explosion of smoke without another word. With honey brown eyes narrowing on the dark green and black liquid, Tsunade mumbled, just what has that brat been up to? Something almighty, that's what, said Percy who smirked his own joke. Naruto exited the Hokage mansion with a light smile on his face, well, that went better than I expected it to. What did you expect? Jason asked, jail time. Nice question to ask Jason, Piper giggled. What? It was a perfectly fine question to ask in that situation, said Jason as he frowned with a broody look on his face. I'm kidding, the love child teased with a slight smile. More like downright execution, Naruto replied with a shrug, I certainly earned it. It was probably my personal history with Tsunade that saved me from that. Ah, the pros of knowing the head of state, Nico sighed out, getting some laughs. What was that thing you called her? Piper asked curiously as they started to walk through the village, Bachan, what does that mean? 
Bachan is the equivalent to old lady, once again shrugged the eldest blonde present, making the two younger demigods look at him like he was crazy. The woman didn't look any older than 30, 35 at best. So she's older than she looks, Annabeth said with crossed arms, I knew she could be that good looking. Probably some illusion. As they turned down a fenced pathway that would take them back to the academy, Jason scrutinized the teen with an odd look, you have issues with authority, don't you? Are you just now noticing? Naruto retorted with a roll of his eyes. True, you would have to be pretty slow to not notice that by now. Percy nodded mockingly to Jason, who frowned at his Greek counterpart. It's going to get you killed one day, Helios said chittingly. Indeed it could Helios, Hades nodded happily, it'll be worth it, shot back the incarnation as a smirk crossed his face. Piper and Jason walked behind the older two demigods, taking in the sights and slowing down their pace consequently. Small talk for the future couple no doubt, Leo teased, getting faint smiles from the couple in question. The blonde looked to his girlfriend, who was now walking along his left side, and lightly nudged her arm, you're awfully quiet. Talia simply gave him a look from the corner of her eye and then returned her gaze forward. The colder shoulder huh, Percy said, yep. Talia nodded, it would be what she would do. Naruto frowned at the raven-haired girl's cold shoulder, prompting him to look ahead before he spoke again, I know that no amount of apologies could ever make what I did right, Talia Chan. Nothing I say can make this better, we both know that. Just know that even if you decide to hate me forever, I will still love you. Talia blinked at that while some gaped and most of the women cooed. See, he really is a great boy to be in a relationship. The love goddess said with a smirk, if your other messes this up, then I have nothing but pity for her. The hunter just glared at her for a second before turning back to the story. Talia turned to look at her boyfriend, opening and closing her mouth to say something. Gods, why did he have to have such a silver tongue? Huh, guess he has some skill from his uncle, Hermes said with a puffed chest. Hey, his older brother interjected. I'll have you know I can be a smooth talker, too. So can my kids. But they can't lie, shut up. Then again, he had a really skilled tongue if their makeout sessions were anything to go by, she was getting off track. No, please, go on. Honestly Aphrodite, Artemis griped with a tired and annoyed look on her face. What? I was just curious as all. The innocently smiling love goddess retorted. She opened her mouth to really talk in order to get off what was on her chest. Before Talia could even begin, a familiar annoying voice addressed the blonde first, Naruto. Stupid pink-haired menace, said Aphrodite said with venom while she gritted her teeth. This is not going to end well, Percy said with a grimace. Well, Dud Johnson, Mr. D rolled his eyes. The four demigods stopped walking and turned around to see the pink-haired aide running towards them. Naruto groaned and pinched the bridge of his nose as the woman came to a stop in front of them. Why did you resign? Sakura demanded. Geez, he already said it. Hazel said, her tone laced with annoyance. Moving to stand in front of the other three, Naruto defended himself, I told you. I have other duties as the son of Apollo. The pink-haired woman growled, don't be an idiot, Naruto. There is no god of the sun. If she was real, I would curse her, so bad. Apollo simmered with a deep frown on his face. Oh, that little bitch. And Hell agrees completely. Well, yeah, he was the former sun god, so this mortal would piss him off. Hermes reasoned, getting bland glare form his sun brother. If I still had a physical body and most of my godly power I would smite the holy Tartarus out of her. Helios began to rage. Don't let him hear you say that. Naruto mumbled as he reached up to rub his head from the headache Helios was giving him. What kind of idiot believes they're the child of a god, continued Sakura. We do, the demigods said, irritation on their faces. They hated stupid skeptics, those people made their life harder at times. I dunno, maybe the same kind of idiot who promises to risk his life to save someone that doesn't want to be saved, snidely replied the blonde. You were trying to help your friend, Sakura exclaimed. Oh, I think I see what happened here. Aphrodite smirked. Little girl likes the traitor boy, even though Naruto liked her, 
she asked him to bring her back for him. She thought with a perfect understanding of the love situation. Seriously, Piper asked with a blink, how could she even get all that from just one two lines? I'm very good at I do sweetie, yeah, and he put his fist through my fucking lung in return. Naruto said with narrowed eyes, after I forced him to miss my heart. He was under the influence of the curse mark, Sakura argued. This girl is defending a traitor, who tried to kill Naruto. How could she love some psychopath? Piper asked, not understanding at all. Simple, she wants to fix the broken toy, a medal of honor one could view it as to fix him, her mother answered simply. She was really loving this deep view into her domain right now. I beg to differ, retorted the son of Apollo, he seemed pretty coherent when he was driving my skull through the ground from 50 feet in the air. And that cursed healing comes into play once again, Apollo sighed out, both thankful and depressed his kid had to go through that life. This isn't like you, Sakura announced, the Naruto I knew wouldn't just abandon his friends for a bunch of delusional kids. Why you little bi, Talia, Artemis said sternly to her lieutenant, who cowed. Though the huntress could understand the rage she was feeling, it was still only a story. Jason, Piper and Talia all glared at the woman for her response. Talia pushed forward to stand next to Naruto, speaking for the first time since leaving the Hokage's office with an angry tone, who are you calling a kid? Yes, conflict, Ares cheered, bout time. No, no, this is a lover's conflict, the girlfriend and the former crush. Aphrodite smiled brightly, just perfect. Talia groaned at this, but did wonder what her other would do to the stupid pink-haired bitch. Just stay out of this, Sakura snapped with a glare at the raven-haired girl, you're part of the reason he's acting so, so, stupid. You do a good job of that yourself Pinky. Talia spat out, frowning. Maybe he's uncomfortable around the girl that used to brain him 24-7 to compensate for her boardwalk-sized forehead. Talia shot back, ooh, the demigod smiled widely, Talia crossing her arms with a haughty smirk. Who do you think you are? demanded the pink-haired medic with narrowed green eyes locked on the slightly shorter girl's form. Her eyes drifted down briefly and narrowed even further in slight jealousy before moving back up to meet the electric blue that were glaring at her. A 16-year-old Talia has a bigger chest than a grown woman, wow, that is so sad, I have no words. Annabeth snickered, getting Talia to flush, closing up her jacket a bit while feeling self-conscious. Talia crossed her arms over her chest and replied, I'm the idiot's girlfriend. Pleased to meet you pink-haired bi, Hestia gave the girl a stern glare, getting the hunter to cow under it. The eldest sibling nodded, returning to the story. You, Sakura repeated in disbelief. After looking her over once again the pink-haired woman looked at Naruto and said, didn't think you went for them that young, pervert. Ha, huh, true, Hermes snickered, you're what? 16 and Naruto's 22. I'm technically 19, Talia retorted with some heat. Love has no age difference, Aphrodite said coolly, glaring at the messenger god, who gulped under her stern gaze. She's actually 19, Naruto corrected with a frown at the shot at his girlfriend and himself. Oh, he shouldn't have done that, said Piper. And she is standing right here, Talia interjected with a scowl. Naruto wisely shut up. Sakura however, did not catch the hint. He he, about to see that famed temperament that runs in the family. Poseidon smirked, getting Zeus to flare his nostrils at the dig at him. Talia seemed perfectly keen with the idea of her ripping this girl a new one though. That dark smirk on her face said volumes. Why don't you go run along and look around? Sakura snorted out as she cracked her knuckles and turned to Naruto, I have some unfinished business to deal with. Konoha business. Oh, she honestly believes Naruto is still her punching bag, after he kicked her ass at Mount Othris. Hazel scoffed. Mortals are stupid that way daughter, Hades said with a nod, he knew, he had to deal with them all the time. Bunch of whiners. What, you too afraid to get your ass handed to you with an audience? Talia said with a smirk, just like he did back at Mount Othris. And Talia brings the zinging one-two combo. Apollo said like a sports announcer. Sakura seemed to falter at that before regaining her fire, didn't I see you run away on that sleigh? Hey, 
I was stabbed in the side. Talia retorted hotly. Naruto winced and Talia growled before speaking again, at least I'm not mistaken for being a boy. Oh, and a sickening blow to the throat. Apollo, Artemis said, looking annoyed. He didn't care, this was fun. Seriously, how many times could you announce in a coming catfight? And what is that supposed to mean? The pink-haired medic asked dangerously. It was very self-explanatory. Leo said blandly, she wasn't even cute enough to at least cover for the lack of chest. Uh, Talia Chan, Naruto said, putting a hand on his girlfriend's shoulder, I think you've made your point. Push that button Talia, Annabeth cheered. She'd better. The hunter smirked, her other was getting the pink woman good. No, don't make her stop now, Naruto, said Sakura as she glared at Talia, who returned it with equal amounts of anger, let her explain herself. What's to explain? Talia countered, you're flatter than a board. And the KO hit is delivered. Apollo rang out, getting cheers from the demigods. Talia raised her arms in the air like some boxing champion. Sakura clenched her fist and glared at the raven-haired girl as her face turned red in embarrassment. So she was lacking in the chest area, so what? That didn't give this, this, little bitch the right to call her out on it. Bitch, huh? Talia glowered stupid pink-haired bitch. Before she knew it, Sakura had thrown a punch charged with all the chakra that was needed for an Okusho right at the girl's face. That was the super strong punch she did. Annabeth shouted, aghast that the woman would actually try to kill Talia. Another hand caught hers and she felt herself get shoved back to the ground. Looking up she saw that it was Naruto who had caught her fist, his body engulfed in golden flames. Bitch made the wrong move. Ares said, shaking his head. Naruto, you jackass, Sakura screamed at the blonde as she got back to her feet. How is he a jackass? Leo asked in a disbelief. He pushed her to the ground, ooh. Nico said in a girly voice, Crazy was about to punch into Leah's face. I would have broken the arm, better opinion. Amen to that, I said I wasn't here to deal with you, but it looks like I don't have a choice. The second you attacked Talia Chan, you forced my hand, Naruto said as he looked at the pink-haired woman. As his eyes narrowed, he raised his left hand and snapped his fingers. Um, what was that? Leo asked in confusion, but Percy and Annabeth laughed. You'll see, the blonde child of wisdom said with mirth. Was it minor yes, but it was still slick to do. After seconds passed, Sakura looked at him and asked, what was the point of that? your useless finger snap. Rhyming couplets, nice, Talia smirked, her eyes widened and Naruto grinned foxily as his golden flames flickered out. Sakura tried again, you think you've won, there's no evidence as to what you've done. What is wrong with me, why do all my sentences end poetically? Flawless, Apollo said, brushing off imaginary dust from his shoulders with a cocky smirk. This, is, hilarious, Helios said before bursting into laughter. Behind Naruto, the three demigods began to do the same. Yeah, enjoy that, the blonde said to the increasingly red-faced Kunoichi, it should wear off in a few days, a week at the most. Boo, he should have made it longer. Annabeth pouted, getting Percy to chuckle. Well, maybe he didn't want to start up too much trouble at home. Fine, the blonde conceded to her boyfriend. A week at the most, this had better wear off Uzumaki or you're going to be toast, raged the pink-haired woman as he turned away. Wow, her sentences really are good. Makes her sound smart, Frank snarked. Frustrated, Sakura stood and tried to rush Naruto from behind only to get stopped as Talia drove her own fist into the woman's gut. The wind was knocked out of her, making Sakura double over. Nice one, take that, the hunter cheered, it was a good punch all right. Of course she did it so it would be good. For good measure, Talia added a sparking punch right to her protected forehead, making the pink-haired medic's head snap back as she fell to the ground once more. Piper giggled, talk about a thunder punch. Good one. Piper cheered for her other, man, talk about perfect timing with that one-liner. It was super effective, Jason commented with a wince. And Jay with the follow-up, Leo nodded. I didn't even know you knew about Pokemon dude. Poke what? 
Silence was ensued as everyone looked at Jason. As he thought about how the metal on the woman's head had to conduct the electricity through it. Piper burst into laughter and Jason furrowed his brow, what's so funny? Well, he made a pretty good joke unintentionally. Percy said, to support his Roman friend. Thank you Percy, the blonde said. Thunderpunch, super effective. Piper giggled out, shoving the boy lightly, good one. He doesn't get it either. Piper pouted, looking disappointed. Good what? The confused teenager asked. The girl giggled again before looking at the genuine confusion on Talia's brother's face. Wow, you're really sheltered, aren't you? Piper said in astonishment. Jason turned a shade of red as Piper giggled at her other's blunt statement. As Piper explained the unintentional joke Jason made, Naruto looked at his girlfriend and asked, was that necessary? No, Talia admitted as she rolled her wrist, but it felt really good. I bet it did, Talia smirked, pleased with her other's actions. Talk about a mean right hook, Helios commented before wondering aloud, that reminds me, I wonder how the kids are taking it back at camp. I'm sure they're just relaxing after a hard day of training, Naruto thought as he waved the concern off. We wish, Percy and Annabeth said dryly. Annabeth and her group had exited the labyrinth moments ago to a giant desert, and after walking across what Grover revealed to be a cattle grate, found a herd of Apollo's red cattle. Hey, cool, Apollo grinned, he missed seeing his cows. Percy and Annabeth started to sweat a bit. They didn't have it in them to tell the sun god what went down there. It revealed that they were on a ranch of some sort. Soon enough they met the owner of the ranch, a man with three chests noticeable by the three different colored shirts, two arms and humongous legs covered by Levi's that would give redwood trees a run for their money. A tanned head sat on the center of the three chests, black hair slicked back and a pencil-thin mustache above his lips. He said his name was Jirion. Percy scowled deeply. Annabeth looked angry and Nico, well, he had a deep frown on his face with his black eyes glimmering with grudge in them. Apparently, Jirion was a businessman who cared only for money, evident by the poor conditions some of the other caged animals were in, much to Grover's ire. He reminded the original members of the quest for the Master Bolt and Nico of Hades' ferryman, Karen. Karen would find that insulting. Hades muttered, but his lip was quirked up. He was just a sly, too convincing to let them pass without alerting the titan's forces if one of them performed a task of Heracles, cleaning his carnivorous steed's stables. Hera pursed her lips as Percy grunted, annoyed at the reminder of the task. Percy volunteered, figuring that his lineage with the god of the seas would help in the task. As soon as Percy was led away, the others met the immortal son of Ares and Jirion's herdsman, Eurition. He he he, Ares laughed in a low mocking tone. His smith brother rolled his eyes, oh shut it. He's a good kid. More like stupid. Where does he get that from, hm? Athena asked her counterpart, getting a growling scowl from the scarred man while Hephaestus smirked. He was a tall, muscled cowboy with white hair and a thick white beard that made him look like Father Time, if Father Time had decided to move to Texas. After a pleasant chat, Eurition surprised the rest of the group and bound them tightly in ropes. Stupid cowboy, Nico muttered with a pout, hating the fact he got caught by surprise. Annabeth rolled her eyes, he let you stay with him to think, didn't he? She asked him, getting a huffing nod from the child of the Dark One. When I get out of this, you're gonna be sorry. Nico raged as he struggled with his binds. You tell him, Nico cheered on his other. He then grumbled under his breath, I can't believe Percy is escaping this because he's scooping poop. Hey, it was a lot harder than you think, the boy in question said. Nico snorted, please, I bet you did what Herc did. She wouldn't let me, Percy sighed at that, man, that was a draining task. They all say that, Eurition grumbled as he rolled his eye, dropping Grover next to a whimpering Tyson. You know, Ares said, they really do. Are you using Apollo's cattle to feed monsters for the crooked one? Annabeth asked as she watched one of the red cows chew on grass. What? Apollo hissed out. Hermes flinched. Ouch, talk about bad timing on that one. Jirion was lucky to be in Tartarus at the moment. Eurition shifted uncomfortably as he looked up, making Annabeth gape, you are. 
I think I might kill your kid now Ares, the god of the sun fumed. By all means, the war god chuckled out. It's the finest source of meat on the planet, Eurytion mumbled with an uncomfortable shrug, and it's not like I have any choice in the matter. Bullshit, Apollo gritted out in fury, light surrounding him slowly. Choice in what matter? Jirion asked as he walked back to the group. Eurytion went quiet as his boss returned, prompting the rancher to jerk his head in the cattle's direction, don't you have a job to do? Sorry boss, the son of Ares grumbled as he walked away. Jirion shook his head, that buffoon, takes after his father, that one. Fuck you, he does speak the truth, Athena smirked, getting another growl from her brother. You're feeding Apollo's cattle to the Titan army, Annabeth asked him while shifting in her binds. Her hands reached for a hidden kanai in her jeans belt loop, concealed by her shirt. I didn't have that, Annabeth frowned, her other was going to bust out. I thought I fought him, Percy said, I think other Annie is going to bust out some ninja moves, Talia said as she smirked, girl power for the win. Nico and Grover saw the handle and started to struggle with their own binds, covering their slight movement towards their quest leader in an effort to hide her plan. Jirian looked at the blonde girl with a smirk, what? Are you going to tell him through prayer? If the god of prophecy doesn't know by now that I'm feeding his cattle to the titans in return for payment, then he deserves the accusations that he is an imbecile. Once he comes back, I am killing him again, for sport of course. Apollo said in a deadly calm tone, his blue eyes looked like ice cubes. And what about his kids? Annabeth prompted, what are you going to do when they find out? Most of his children hold little love for him, scoffed the monster nonchalantly. Just wait till you return. You obviously haven't met Naruto then, Grover snorted. Nico grinned and continued, yeah, he may make fun of his dad, but there's no one Naruto looks to more for guidance. Knew that kid loved me, the father of said demigod said softly. Honestly, how could he not? Who is this Naruto? Jirian asked haughtily another child of a no-named whore. That lousy motherfucker, Apollo said, slamming his fist on his throne and making a small burst of fire appear at the impact. Apollo, no, that was not cool, he told his aunt, thoroughly pissed right now, but Artemis placed a hand on his arm, getting him to calm down somewhat. He was not happy when his kids' moms were dissed. You take that back, Nico shouted angrily. Kashina was as close as a second mother he was going to get since Persephone didn't get along with him or Bianca well. Nico's eyes widened at that. Wow, that must have felt, nice. To have such a nice woman feel like a second mother to him and his sister. That gnawing jealously for his other was feeling a bit stronger at that moment. Even if she was a slave driver when it came to training. Naruto Uzumaki, Annabeth clarified, making the monster pause in thought you may know him as the heir of Helios. Jirian looked slightly unruffled, quickly recomposing himself, W well, it's a good thing he won't find out, seeing as you'll soon enough be in the titan's hands. Seems someone's scared of your kid, Hermes said to his brother. Oh he best be, my kid rocks. The sun god gloated. Not if Percy completes his task, Annabeth retorted. She had managed to unsheathe the kanai Naruto had given her her secondary weapon in case she ever dropped Luke's dagger. I have to look into that, Annabeth frowned, seriously, a secondary weapon would come in handy. Looking past Jirian for a moment, she caught sight of Eurition putting their gathered weapons into a shed filled to the brim with others. I can literally see the wheels turning in that head of yours Annabeth, Leo smirked, the blonde gave him one back. You bet, Jirian laughed before leaning down to get in the daughter of Athena's face, who said anything about letting you go if he does the task. I never swore on the sticks. Why should I keep my word? Good business, said the messenger god as though it were obvious. You worthless piece of, watch your tone, demigod, Jirian warned Nico with narrowed eyes, the, protection, of your parents does not stand here. All that's keeping you alive right now is your value. And frankly, I decide that value. As she glared at the monster, Annabeth managed to cut her wrists free, and now slowly started working on the rope around her arms and torso. She cut all ropes but one before shifting her arms in an attempt to loosen the binds. 
I feel a badass any moment coming in a few. The hunter snickered. Oh, this was going to be good. If Naruto trained her, well, let's see what the other child of wisdom can do. To throw Jirion off his guard, Annabeth asked, what if I told you I could summon the heir of Helios? That's a scary though, Leo snickered, got him on speed dial. Annabeth, who knows, the blonde smirked, you lie, Jirion snapped, looking unruffled once again at the thought of being discovered. More like P himself times three, Nico jeered, I'm not, the young blonde daughter of Athena retorted, just one word and he'll be here faster than you can say size triple XL. You wouldn't dare, I don't have to, Annabeth announced, I can take you myself. Darn right I can, the child of wisdom said, but was inwardly jealous that her other got out while she needed to be rescued. Before Jirion could come up with a witty reply, Annabeth snapped the last rope and freed herself, using her newfound freedom to attack the three-chested monster. Go Annie, Talia cheered while her friend grinned. Her first strike was a cut to his left leg, making Jirion cry out in shock as the bronze blade cut through his hide. The blonde girl used his shocked state to run towards the shed that was overflowing with weapons. Really, leaving those all around, he was so stupid. Percy snickered. Eurition. Jirion called for his herdsman, kill the girl. Eurition looked to where he last saw Annabeth, who had ducked into the shed, before looking back at his boss. With a scowl, he pointed at Jirion and said, hell no. You keep sending me out to do your dirty work. Picking fights for no good reason and making me finish it for you. Well I'm done dying for you. You want the girl dead. Do it yourself. You tell him your ition. Percy nodded with a big smile. Ares had a neutral look on his face. Jirion's eyes narrowed and he called out, Orthus. A massive two-headed dog that looked like a Doberman came from the herd. Both heads had their ears up, with the left head having its tongue out. It went to your ition's side getting an affectionate pat on the head from the immortal half-blooded son of Ares. Jirion gained a look of annoyance and pointed at Annabeth, who had returned from the shed with a belted pouch she was adjusting around her waist. New weapon, Percy asked his girlfriend, getting a pout from her. Let's just see, she answered, wondering what her other picked and a little giddy at her time to shine. Orthus, kill that girl, the rancher insisted. Don't do it, Orthus, Eurition cut in before the dual-headed dog would do just that, this is Jirion's fight. Yeah, fight your own battle your triple-bodied freak. The son of the sea grinned, knowing his girlfriend would pull off a win. Looking at his boss, the son of Ares warned, if you try and chicken out again, we'll help her against you. Bout time that kid grew some balls, Ares grunted. Jirion scowled at the threat and opened his mouth to retort. Instead of a sneering warning, the three-chested monster let out a cry of pain, reaching up and grabbing at his shoulder. He pulled out a rather lengthy throwing knife. I can't knife throw, said Annabeth with a confused blink, what did she learn from Naruto? He had taken from a lost demigod who was long since dead, a daughter of Hermes if he recalled correctly. Hermes' giddy look turned into a frown, his fists clenched tightly. Snapping his small eyes on the blonde-haired girl, Annabeth merely reached into the pouch once more, pulling out several similar blades in her hand. Annabeth, the rising ninja, Leo said in a low announcer tone, getting some laughs. You do realize that this means nothing, Jirion sneered as he tossed the blade to the ground. The hole in his far right shoulder closed shut and the monster smirked, I cannot be defeated so easily, girly. My three hearts are the ultimate backup system and it would take a miracle for such a small frail thing like you to stop me. Cocky idiot, Nico snickered out, Annabeth's eye twitched at the claim and she gave the monster a grimace before throwing her knives once again, this time aiming for his head. One grazed his left ear while the monster's hands caught the other two. He tossed the blades down and gave another smug grin. Okay Annabeth, what do we know about him? Annabeth asked herself as she threw another knife at Jirion's chest, he heals fast. He has three hearts, large legs and he's very slow. Obviously relies on regeneration if his taunts are anything to go by. So that means he's trying to make me tire myself out. Smart. So I can't trick him into killing himself like I could a bad cyclops or another mindless monster. What does that leave me then? 
Athena smiled at the fast analysis in her daughter's mind, pride swelling in her chest. Jirion got tired of having to remove knives from his body and began stalking towards the daughter of Athena. Annabeth took note of this and reached into the pouch once more. This pouch doesn't feel like it's losing knives like it should be, Annabeth thought with mild confusion. She looked to the knives scattered across the ground and her eyes widened when one flashed before disappearing and a bit of weight was added to her pouch. A grin spread across Annabeth's face, never-ending knife pouch. Oh, Naruto is going to be so jealous. As a ninja would be, Hermes smirked, he did do some good work for his kids. Annabeth pouted, that looked so useful, it really did. Annabeth's grin vanished when she had to move out of the way of a swipe from the towering Jirion rushing past him into the herd of red cattle. Hey, don't use my cows as cover. Apollo blanched. Oh let her be, Athena waved him off, but the god just muttered favoritism. Eurytion and Orthus both moved out of the snarling Jirion's way as he stormed after her, the immortal demigod having a smug smirk on his face. Annabeth came to a stop behind a grazing cow, panting and trying to regain her breath from the run into the herd. She pulled another throwing knife out and slowly peeked out from her hiding spot. Jirion was turning and snarling, shoving Apollo's cattle out of his way as he failed to find the blonde girl. Cows make good cover, who knew? Leo chuckled. There's no way I could bring him down with a guerrilla tactic, mused the daughter of Athena. If this were any other enemy I would keep moving and throwing knives from behind different cows, but that won't work on him. Very true. Jirion is one of the rare regeneration ones. Artemis said with a critical eye. I need to take out all three of his hearts in a quick and successive manner. If I had a bow I'd ask Apollo and Artemis for help, wait. That's it. Three hearts, three blades in quick succession should do it. But I have to get all the shots in at the same time from the same angle. No way, Percy said, his jaw dropping in slight disbelief. She could make that shot. Annabeth was having same thoughts. Stepping out from her current hiding spot, Annabeth called out, Jirion. The monster swiveled from his place and snarled, there you are. Are you finally ready to die? I should be asking you the same thing, Annabeth retorted with a frown as she readied a knife in her right hand. Feel the bodicitude, let it flow into you Annie. Okay Talia, we get it, Nico rolled his eyes. Aw shut it death breath. You're just sour that you're tied up. Shut up. Adorable, but sooner or later you're going to run out of knives, Jirion sneered, just surrender and I'll make it as painless as possible. I don't think he will, Leo said in a mock whisper. The worst thing you could do in life is give up, Naruto said from a memory of their journey across country. Use the force, Annabeth. Piper said in a ghostly voice. Annabeth pouted, stupid Piper and her movie jokes which prompted Annabeth's eyes to harden into a cold steel shade of grey. There's that Athena glare, Poseidon muttered, said goddess smirked after hearing him. Without another word, Annabeth pulled her right hand over her left shoulder. Closing her eyes for a split second, Annabeth prayed, Apollo, Artemis, please make my aim true. You bet kiddo, Apollo winked to the girl praying while Artemis smirked, too. Percy frowned knowing at who really answered that one. Hera smiled widely. The knife left her hand after her eyes snapped open. A second knife left her left hand as the empty right pulled out another. The third knife flew from the daughter of Athena's grasp a second and a half behind the second knife. Annabeth watched in what seemed like slow motion as the knives struck their marks, the left chest being struck dead center, followed by the right and then finishing with the center. Wow, wish I could do that. Talia said with an impressed whistle. Annabeth puffed out her chest, yes, her other was awesome, and now she wanted to learn how to throw like that, too. Jirion's eyes widened and he stumbled backwards. The monster looked down at his chest, the knives buried into each one with only half of the handles sticking out. Shakily, Jirion looked back at the equally surprised Annabeth, before stumbling backwards and falling to the ground. His hand lifted once more and he watched it as it slowly dissolved away into golden dust. And stay down. Apollo whooped. Nice going Annabeth. It was a fine throw. Artemis nodded, somewhat wishing that Annabeth had indeed joined her hunters. 
Annabeth slowly felt a small grin spread across her face as Jirian dissolved into golden dust. Her grin fell as she walked forward and found nothing left behind. That sucks, Hazel frowned. I know, Frank nodded to his girlfriend. Nothing but the knives she had used to kill him. They vanished in a small flash of light, and she felt the weight return to the pouch on her hip. The daughter of Athena continued to smile after she returned to the other side of the cattle pen, eyeing Eurition warily. The son of Ares gave her a grin and pat one of Orthus' heads, don't worry about us. Jirian lost, you're free to go. Wuss. More like fairness, Athena said to her war brother. What about Percy? Annabeth asked with a frown. What about me? Percy asked as he walked into the area from the stables. And someone misses the party, geez Percy. Talia chided, making her cousin frown. He was knee deep in horse poop, what does she want him to do about it? Looking at the three still tied up and back to Annabeth and Eurition, the son of Poseidon asked, did I miss something? Wow dude, you even say that. Leo shook his head in disbelief as Percy turned a bit hot in the face at that. You have no idea, seaweed brain, said Annabeth as her head shook. This is a nice outcome and all, but could someone untie us before we burn in the sun? Nico asked with a hint of annoyance. I think you could use some color, Percy smirked to the ghost king who frowned at his words. I happen to like my skin tone, thank you. So would a vampire, Hazel giggled at her brother who turned his frown into a pout. Once the other three members of the quest had been released from their binds, Eurition offered to make them a meal in order to make up for the ordeal and to thank Annabeth for the idea of how to shift the ranch into his favor. As she would, Athena smiled with an approving nod. They declined the meal, but agreed to a small snack and soda, allowing Percy to relax and tell them about his completed labor. When that was all said and done, Percy looked to Annabeth and asked, so how did you kill Jirian? Three knives to the hearts, she answered with a shrug, with a little help from Naruto's dad and Artemis. Not really, Percy muttered with a side glance at Hera. So the rumors are true about Helios' heir? Eurition asked, leaning forward with a curious look on his face, a demigod who holds the soul of the fallen god. Yeah, that has been popular with the minor gods and immortals, as we've seen so far. Hermes said with a stroke of his chin. More than true, Percy said as he took a sip of the Mountain Dew he was given, Helios actually speaks to him. Eurition whistled and sat back in his seat, that's a game changer. Dot two souls in one body. Wonder what that's like. Amusing. Hades smirked, getting many nods. Apparently, really loud, Nico chimed in, recalling moments in January when Naruto would randomly just shout at nothing claiming to be arguing with Helios. That just has to be awkward in public. Piper snickered. It stopped shortly after Bianca fell ill, but it was amusing when it happened. I would think so, Eurition mused. He turned to Annabeth and asked, did Chiron teach you to throw like that? Naruto did, Annabeth replied with a small smile. Of course he would, you were just so jealous of having someone dot on Annie. Percy huffed, so what if he did? It felt like there was an even better Luke around. Well, at least to him it did. He gave me the foundation of what I know today about combat. Okay this is new, Annabeth, interest in her voice as she leaned in a bit. Really? Nico asked curiously. Tell us about it, Grover said eagerly. He loved hearing about his old group's earlier days. Eurition scratched one of Orthus' heads as he listened intently, and Percy put his drink down looking to the soul girl at the table. Weave us a tale, Annabeth, Percy smirked. His father chuckled at the joke while Athena glared at the boy for it. As she pulled a knife out of the pouch on her hip, Annabeth thought about the first night Naruto had shown her, Talia and Luke how to properly throw a kunai. Oh, so it was a group lesson. Nico chimed, no special treatment for the lil, sis. Oh be quiet, Nico. The first night she and Talia actually had more than a few words with each other. I smell tension, the love goddess sang out with a wide smile. Annabeth and Talia turned to one another with a frown, they wouldn't argue with each other, right? She said softly to the group sitting at the table, it was the night after we escaped the Colchis Bull. Yeah for continuation, quiet Apollo, Artemis chided, wanting to hear more. 
Why would I want to throw my only weapon? Luke asked with a furrowed brow as Naruto helped Annabeth properly grip the knife. Ah, isn't that sweet of him? Annabeth turned pink-cheeked at that, stupid Piper and her teasing. He had made it known that he did not agree with this lesson, that maybe turns with Naruto's bow would be more beneficial. True, Hermes said in agreement with his son. Naruto had told him in response that no one but he was to touch the bow, because of the enchantment upon it. Annabeth knew it existed. She once touched it while Naruto slept and became ill for a day. Annabeth frowned along with her mother who turned to her bow brother, cursed weapon, really. All the better to keep safe from thieves. Apollo said, taking a sidelong glance at Hermes who looked offended. Though the way it was crafted, maybe Apollo was onto something. From then on, Naruto kept a close eye on his bow, going as far as to sling it over his shoulder every time he went to sleep. It may not be your only weapon forever, Naruto replied with a sigh as he ducked under another throw from their resident lightning user, Talia Chan. How many times do I have to tell you to grip it firmly but lightly? Yeah Talia, can't you know learn right? Nico mocked with stupid words on purpose. Talia flushed, screw off. How many times do I have to tell you to stop calling me that? Talia retorted with a frown. We know you love it. Annabeth rolled her eyes. Traitor. Talia pouted with crossed arms. Jason gave a light laugh of his own, but stopped when his sister glared at him. Naruto looked at his fellow blonde with a grin, what's the count, Annie? Oh you little you wouldn't. Well, I have known him longer. T-C-H, 37, Annabeth said with a smile to her pseudo brother. Traitor, Talia muttered, oh, it was all in good fun, said Annabeth. Talia still grumbled. Talia rolled her eyes at the two. Annabeth nearly always sided with Naruto in their arguments. I wouldn't always do that the blonde child of wisdom frowned. Unless it was silly or stupid. There's the clincher. Annabeth nodded to herself, smiling. She also noticed that Annabeth seemed to smile every time that Naruto successfully annoyed her. Annie. Annabeth just rolled her eyes at the mock hurtful look Talia had on. Oh this just had gotten ten times better, Aphrodite said as she nibbled on her bottom lip, giddy at what she knew what was happening. Guess it'll take more than thirty-seven. Delia Chan, Naruto said with a smirk to the younger girl, who quickly averted his gaze. Um, you like those eyes, don't you Talia? Blue must be your color. The love goddess smiled brightly. Talia frowned at the woman, turning her head so her face was out of the goddess sight, not bothering to give a retort. Annabeth frowned slightly, her finger slipping and accidentally cutting herself on the blade. Ooh. So upset at big bro having attention on the new girl you slip up. Piper teased the blonde, who flushed at the insinuation of it all. Really Annabeth, pay attention, Hazel jokingly chided, getting the blonde to flush darker. Ow, she called out, dropping the kunai that was in her hand to the ground. There's some of that absentmindedness you'd expect of a blonde. Oh shut up Piper, Annabeth cried out with flaming cheeks. Careful. Naruto warned as he returned his attention to the younger blonde. He knelt down and picked the small onyx-colored blade up, putting the knife away. Checking her finger wound, the older blonde smiled softly at Annabeth, it's just a small cut. Should be all better if you just wrap it up. There's some of that medical know-how, Apollo nodded approvingly. Yet, you couldn't even let him know about it, his smith brother pointed out. Go play with your toys firebeard. Can't listening to a story. What about an anesthetic? Luke asked, it could get infected. Annabeth smiled softly at that while Percy looked put out a bit. Naruto shook his head in disagreement, not if we wash it off first. Come on, Annie there's a stream over here we can clean it at. Naruto led Annabeth to the stream and gently guided her finger to the water. She hissed in pain as the water coursed over it and did so once again when Naruto blew lightly on the cut to dry the damp finger. From his shirt, Naruto tore a piece of cloth and wrapped it tightly around the injury. Talia and Luke, who followed the other two demigods, were silent in awe at the care Naruto showed to the younger blonde girl's finger. You want a kiss to feel better. Piper cooed at Annabeth with mirth. Annabeth just growled in embarrassment. I bet she wanted a kiss somewhere else, 
the teaser's mother said with a gleam in her eye. The blonde child of wisdom looked like a tomato from how red she was. Tying off the cloth, Naruto grinned at Annabeth and pat her on the head, see. Easy fix. Annabeth smiled at him thankfully, throwing her arms around his neck and surprising him with a tight hug. Naruto hugged the girl back, his smile still in place. You know, they do look good together, Aphrodite hummed in approval. Artemis scowled, she's seven Aphrodite, by order. I meant when she got older, oh, if only Naruto stuck around, the love goddess sighed out. Annabeth just wanted to crawl into a hole. Ah, look at you, Luke teased, just a lovable old teddy bear. Nice move kid, Hermes face palmed, Naruto was a get-backer kinda kid. Poor Luke. Pushing the younger daughter of Athena back out of the hug, Naruto said softly, Annie, I need to go kill Luke, you stay here for a second. Do us the favor, fuck you Ares, Hermes scowled to his older brother while the war god just laughed. Annabeth giggled as Naruto stood and then ran at the other boy, who yelped impressively before he turned tail and ran. Something daddy is good at, said Apollo. Hermes just gave a dull glare to Apollo, stupid arrowhead. Leaving her alone with the equally amused Talia. Here it comes, Aphrodite smiled while rubbing her hands eagerly. Annabeth's giggles died down and Talia shook her head, looking to the younger girl with a smile, boys, am I right? Indeed, Artemis said while Talia chuckled lightly. Annabeth looked at Talia with a small frown, making the older girl furrow her brow, hey, are you okay? And confrontation, the Lady of Doves said in excitement. Not quiet, Hestia told her with a tiny smile. Oh poo. Then it gets a little fuzzy, Annabeth said apologetically to the group, making them sigh in disappointment. Lair, Aphrodite said with a pout. Aphrodite, Athena frowned, how dare she say that about her daughter, even though she knew her child was holding back, not lying. Honestly, the nerve. The daughter of Athena smiled reassuringly. Hey, don't worry. I'm sure I was just a little nervous at being alone with Talia. No she wasn't, be silent Aphrodite and let us hear her out. Artemis rolled her eyes. Well at least you take some minor interest in romance, is Kronos back on the rise? You take that back, ladies, Apollo shouted. Once he had their attention, he pointed at the screen. Let's see my little player make some sparks, please. Annabeth just groaned. What the others didn't know was that this was a lie that Annabeth had made up when she realized what she was feeling years after it happened. Percy frowned at this while Annabeth turned pink in the face, she had feelings for Naruto, oh gods was this really awkward. Did she have a thing for blondes at that age, or was it some father complex? He was blonde, oh gods. Annabeth thought back with small pink tinted cheeks at her possessiveness of Naruto. Someone get that phone because I called it. Silence Aphrodite, Athena said in defense of her daughter. Who was really grateful at the moment? Fine, I'll just enjoy the sparks. The lady of doves huffed. Annabeth had a glare locked on the older girl, Annie, Talia mocked frowned, but looking a little hurt. Sorry, said girl muttered. One of accusation as she related the interactions between Naruto and Talia to the brief interactions Naruto had with a minor goddess Irene back in San Francisco. There's that goddess thing, man, this girl just wants to break off a piece of that, Hyper said in slight awe of the exotically handsome blonde. The goddess of peace had offered to help Annabeth get to a safe place as long as Naruto stayed with her in San Francisco, insisting that he had had enough fighting in his life already. Of course she would use that as an excuse, Ares huffed, he never did like his half-sister. She still sent him peace advocate emails. Naruto declined kindly, but after that meeting Annabeth was wary of other older floozies. Floozies? Hazel asked the blonde with amused eyes, really? I was seven, Annabeth said while her cheeks became a healthy shade of pink. She didn't know how to properly say or think floozy at the time. See? Annabeth pointed to support her point. The earth user just snickered, floozies. Annabeth huffed, turning away from the Roman girl. Around her brother, don't think I don't know what you're up to. Annabeth announced accusingly, you're trying to take Naruto away. So bold to say it right up front, the love goddess gasped in excitement. Please stop, Annabeth begged. No, 
I want to hear this, too, said Talia, taking a sidelong glance at the blushing Annabeth. W what? Talia asked in surprise, her cheeks flushing, no I'm not. Yet, shut up, Talia shouted to the love goddess, honestly. Yeah you are, the young blonde girl exclaimed with a scowl on her face, he's my brother and you can't have him. I think she wants more than a brother, Frank muttered, but zipped his lip when Percy gave him a glower. I don't want him, Talia groaned as her cheeks darkened. Once again, yet, Artemis just sent Aphrodite a glare, why can't she just shut her love yapping mouth? You do so, Annabeth retorted as her eyes narrowed, you're just lying so that when you take him away it'll look like he wanted to go. Wow, that is a vivid scenario for a seven-year-old to make. Piper blinked in surprise, but her mother waved it off. Nonsense, a girl can think up anything along those lines, Annabeth is just one of those kind of girls. I am not, Annabeth said, sounding miserable from all the teasing. Where are you getting this information? Talia asked, because it's wrong. You wish it was, Piper snickered out. Talia just glared at her brother's girlfriend. I'm not wrong, you're just trying to throw me off guard. Annabeth announced with a pout. And keep that guard up Annabeth. Oh, stop with the cheering, Hephaestus groaned at his wife, seriously, it got so annoying. Aphrodite just huffed, this was too good not to cheer to. You're trying to take him away from me, well Naruto belongs to me. Wow, staking that claim huh? Be quiet Nico. Percy frowned at his cousin, while Annabeth just looked even redder in the face. What? I'm just saying, he's my big brother and not anyone else's, got that? Once again, she doesn't want a brother. The love goddess chimed with a pretty giggle. Wow, really making some assumptions aren't you? Talia asked. Have you met Athena? Silence Hermes, said goddess frowned towards her thieving brother. The god of travelers shrugged, just saying. You do. Pinching the bridge of her nose, Talia tiredly tried to explain, listen Annabeth. I don't want Naruto to be my big brother. Of course not, she wants all that man all over her. I hate you, the hunter glared at the love goddess. I'm just doing my job. The goddess smirked to the child of Zeus. And I don't want to take him away from you, yet. By us, please shut up, Artemis said, her wits at end from the constant interruptions. Never, said Aphrodite with a smirk. You're lying, insisted the daughter of Athena. Talia pouted at her friend, Annie, come oh, stop it Talia, the red-faced demigoddess said, seriously, not funny. I find it a little funny, well I don't, humph. No I'm not, Talia shouted out, a bolt of lightning landing behind her as her emotions got the best of her. Oh, like we haven't seen that before, Hades said with an eye roll. I wonder where, Poseidon wondered with a stroke of his beard. Zeus just silently fumed at his brother's words, ingrates. Annabeth jumped slightly, but stood her ground. Has her mother's balls, I'll give her that, Ares snickered as Athena glared at him for the remark, but did give her young daughter props for not backing down from the lightning. The two glared at each other before Talia sighed and said, Look, Annabeth, you're a sweet girl. Thank you very much, don't let it get to your head, Annie. Too late, Nico snarked. Hey. You obviously care about Naruto a lot and he cares about you. Just not in the way little you wants, Leo supplied. Annabeth glared at him, her wicked gray eyes burning holes into his skull. Good thing he was immune to fire. If it makes you feel better, I'll stop talking to him. Good, Annabeth said with a firm nod. Yeah, good, Piper snickered as Annabeth turned her glare to the daughter of the famed movie star. But that doesn't mean I'll ignore him if he talks to me first, Talia added. Ah, loopholes, Hermes said with a wink towards Talia. The hunter's cheeks heated up, stupid speedy brother. Annabeth pouted but crossed her arms, fine. Learn from those defeats, Annabeth. Aphrodite, Athena gave a darker glare to the love goddess. Annabeth just was to curl up into a ball, this was so embarrassing. Can't say I blame you, Percy interjected snapping Annabeth from the rest of the memory as he took another sip of his Mountain Dew. Percy, the love goddess huffed, it was just getting good. Sorry, said Percy as he rolled his eyes, not sounding sorry at all. 
Setting the now empty can down, the son of Poseidon looked at Eurytion and asked, Do you have an idea of how to find Hephaestus? I do. Everyone rolled their eyes at the remark from the smith god. Leo snickered though, nice dad. Thank you, Leo. Suck up. Ares sneered at his nephew. You're asking the right guy, the son of Ares replied. Grinning at the two, he continued, Well, can't say I do want to give this gift up, but I figure you guys can use it more than me. Not to mention that I owe the both of you for taking care of the carnivorous steeds crap and killing Jirian. Eurytion left the group of five and went to the shed, quickly returning with something in his hand that made Annabeth cry out in surprise, Spider. So your fault they have that fear, Poseidon told his rival as she glared at him for the remark. Easy, easy, the son of Ares said as he set the small machine down on the table. The still unnerved daughter of Athena looked at the machine warily while Eurytion said, this little thing should lead you right to my uncle. He gave it to me after I helped him prank my father. Little asshole, Ares, his mother scolded. Bah! The war god waved off as his full-blooded brother laughed deeply and he glared at the smith. That sounds like an interesting story, Percy said, only to get nudged by Annabeth. Ah, I wanted to hear it, Hermes pouted. Screw you speedstick. The daughter of Athena looked for a brief second at the spider before looking at the herdsman with an apologetic smile. Thank you, Eurytion, but we really need to get going. She then looked at the spider again, her heart racing as she did. Just because it was not real did not mean it wasn't as terrifying. I thought it was a little cute. Percy laughed lightly as his girlfriend in the arm slapped him half-heartedly. He just wrapped an arm around her, getting her to snuggle close to him. I'll take it, Nico said as he rolled his eyes at Annabeth's reaction to the small guide. The son of Hades took the metallic spider and the five departed from Triple G Ranch the way that they came, leaving behind an amused Eurytion who then turned and went back to taking care of his uncle's cattle. Properly, that is. And about time, too. Apollo announced with crossed arms. As the large group on the quest for Daedalus followed their lead given to them by an immortal demigod, Naruto led his own group through his hometown, getting heads to turn as he did. That's right folks, look upon him and his awesomeness. Apollo cheered with a silly grin. Artemis just rolled her eyes at his cheers, but did have a small smile on her face. People mumbled and whispered about the return of their hero, making Naruto smile slightly. Hopefully they wouldn't turn on him too quickly when they found out he had resigned from the shinobi forces. Oh no doubt, mortals are stupid like that, Hades said with honestly. All the gods nodded with him on that one. Many of their children had their backs stabbed by petty mortals at one time or another. Silly fickle things they were, those mortals. Piper and Jason were getting their own looks, too. As they would, mom. Piper moaned in embarrassment. Jason was attracting looks from girls in his age group. Piper glared at the image of all those giggling clique girls, how dare they. And Piper the boy's eyes were practically glued to. Aphrodite smirked as Piper blushed at that, and that was before she got claimed. Jason had a frown on his face, his fist clenched in his anger. Though neither noticed, content to continue their conversation about other things Jason missed by growing up in Camp Jupiter and what he had done in turn. You are kind of sheltered, dude. Leo pointed out, no ill will intended. Sorry, said Jason with a flushed face. Piper just patted his shoulder. No worries, I think it's cute. She said, thanks. Piper went on to talk about her father, how she was annoyed by his work would suck up most of his time and that they never did anything anymore. It does get frustrating at times, Piper frowned at this. Life of a movie star. Kiddo, Apollo shrugged. Very true, the love goddess nodded. Their comments didn't make Piper feel any better. Jason jokingly related, saying his father was busy most of the time, too. You really are, Jason joked to his father, getting a mirthful look from Zeus. He's not really that busy, Poseidon muttered with an eye roll. Tell me about it, Hades bemoaned. Their brother just glared at them. He was shoved into a passing shopper for the joke. And thus the love birds were born, Leo snickered, getting blushes from the couple. The most annoying thing to Naruto was how other teenage guys would look to Leah's way with small grins on their faces. What? Talia said, 
Her eyes narrowed with feminine anger. Her matron right behind her on that one along with Jason. A few catcalls coming out of their mouths. They are dead, Talia muttered. No worries Talia, sure Naruto will do something, Apollo snickered. Well, there was only one to be specific, which made Naruto stop any other attempts by walking over to the one civilian that did call out to her and threaten him in their native tongue about catcalling to his girlfriend. Ah, Ares frowned, at least kick the guy's ass or something. He could tell that others wanted to try what the fool before had, but were wary of gaining the wrath of the former Jinchuriki, rightfully so. As they should be, the sun god nodded sternly. Naruto Onisan, Oyabun. More people he knows, Frank said, wondering how this one would turn out. Naruto turned at the call of his name as well as the title that came after it. The other three demigods did as well, staring at the three teens that slowed to a stop in front of them, all around Naruto and Talia's age, if not a few years older. Stupid tree, Talia pouted, and now most of her friends were older than her, even her own little brother. Well, I thought it was lovely. Demeter huffed at her niece's comment. The lone girl of the group had a light orange hair pulled up above her head in two vertical pigtails, and wore a sleeveless flak jacket over a violet t-shirt, a layered skirt and thigh-high boots. Meh, said the gods, they've seen better, but she wasn't the worst. To her far left was a boy with round glasses on his face, short cropped brown hair, a zipped up black jacket underneath his own olive green utility vest, blue pants and sandals similar to Naruto's own. If it weren't for the small smile on his face, his posture and dulled eyes would have told them he had no interest in being here. Looks like Clovis, Jason whispered, getting nods from those of Camp Half-Blood. Their leader was another boy, with black spiky hair and equally dark eyes. Like his two companions, he wore an olive green flak jacket, only unzipped to reveal a yellow long-sleeved shirt with a loose red spiral on it that looked similar to the one Naruto had on the back of his white jacket. Brown cargo pants covered his legs and like the whiskered blonde he wore sandals. The most glaring feature he had was a long blue scarf wrapped around his neck. He seems rather handsome, still a bit boyish though, the love goddess analyzed. Like many of the warriors around them, they each had a headband with the engraved leaf on the metal plate. The leader grinned in a manner similar to Naruto and said in a heavily accented English dialect, Glad to see you back, boss. Dude's got his own crew. Leo whistled, impressed. Boss, said to Leah as a brow arched. Naruto was rubbing his temples with his right hand's index and thumb, knowing that this was karma at work. All he wanted was to do his duty and get out. Couldn't it be that easy, just once? Please. It never is, Percy jeered at the blonde teen, wanting some petty revenge with the whole Annabeth situation. Sighing, he looked up with a small smile. It's nice to see you again, too, Konohamaru. Hey, see this boss? Konohamaru asked as he tugged at his flak jacket. Chunin already, one step ahead of you on the road to Hokage. Poor boy doesn't even know Naruto doesn't even care for that title anymore. Hazel shook her head. I see that, Konohamaru, said Naruto with a small chuckle at his enthusiasm. Moegi, Udon, congratulations on your own promotions. The two grinned and synchronized a thank you that impressed the foreign demigods. Very polite brats, unlike the rest of you lot, Dionysus jeered at the demigods. The demigods just frowned and grumbled about the wine god. Dionysus chose to ignore them. So where've you been, boss? asked Konohamaru as he eyed the newcomers curiously. His keen eye noticed the close distance Talia kept between him and herself and gave her a once over. Wow, boss. Is this your, you know? His pinky raised as he asked the question and Naruto rolled his eyes. Wow, what is he, five? Piper asked sarcastically. What are you, five? Just use your grown-up words. And for your information, yes, Talia Chan is my girlfriend. Have you guys done it yet? Asked Konohamaru bluntly, a grin on his face. An excellent question, Aphrodite said with a wide grin. No it isn't sputtered out the hunter girl, who was now glaring at the love goddess and then the screen. Stupid ninja kid. Idiot. Said the girl, Moegi, as she punched him in the head, driving him into the dirt. Wow, abusive much? Annabeth asked, 
Tell me about it. Hazel frowned. I see the Amazons loving these girls. Or the hunters, Aphrodite said with a twitch of her nose. Really, it was an innocent question. I wouldn't oppose. Artemis smirked. They were powerful women. Naruto winced in sympathy while Talia clenched her jaw in annoyance. Not only did having such a question asked in public embarrass her, but also now there was apparently an epidemic going around with women in this village braining guys because they were acting like guys. Here, here, Talia cheered on her other. Sure, she occasionally hit Naruto for the same reason, but not hard enough, or as often on the head for that matter, to cause brain damage. Really, I wouldn't never do that, Annabeth said with a nod. Thank you, Percy began to say until Annabeth cut him off. I'd just do what other Talia would do. Percy slumped in his seat, a pout on his face. Jason winced along with Udon, both of them pitying the now twitching teen that was eating dirt, while Piper just gaped at the scene. Who wouldn't? Piper asked to mildly defend herself. Seriously, these people had problems. The people here were crazy, Naruto included since he called a moderately aged woman grandma. And jumped out of a moving car. But that's where the movie magic comes from, Apollo winked to the charm speaker with a chuckle. And fought a giant on his own, only getting help at the end. Wombo combo, Leo cheered, getting Jason to roll his eyes, that was still an idea they had to try out. And he also managed to piss his girlfriend off by keeping the fact he knew her brother was still alive. Still pissed about that, now that Piper thought about it, there were an awful lot of reasons to call Naruto crazy. It's something he gets from his father. Artemis nodded in assurance. Apollo just pouted at her, looking hurt. Moegi Chan, said Konohamaru with a whine as he got up. That was completely uncalled for. I asked a perfectly legitimate question. You asked a perverted question in public, you dumbass, said Moegi. Death to the perverts, Arte. That's like most of everyone here. Apollo pointed out. I stand by my statement. Artemis said with a sniff, making the perverts glower at her while Apollo pouted. As they broke into an argument Naruto sighed and looked at Udon. Does this happen often? Unfortunately, yes, said Udon. So a budding relationship then, the Lady of Doves said with mild interest, as he sniffed up the small hanging booger that followed him around since he was a little kid. Oh that is just repulsive. The love goddess shuddered in disgust. All the females nodded with her and some of the guys, too. That has to suck, mumbled Piper. Thank you for agreeing with me sweetie. Anytime mom. Being stuck with two arguing partners. I know the feeling, said Jason just as quietly. No, I know I mean that, Piper said with an assuring nod. Recalling a war game when he was younger and stuck with a son of Mercury and a legacy of Mars that just wouldn't agree on a plan. How his team won. He still has no idea. I remember that time, not fun. The wind boy shook his head. No, the constant booger, said Piper, pointing out the constant affliction that was bothering Udon. She shook her head. He should just go blow his nose. That's disgusting. There's that dyed blood in her. Hermes chuckled, getting a pretty glare from the love goddess. Uh huh, said Jason as he rolled his eyes with disbelief at the girl's concern. He could care less about a runny nose. Just keep eye contact, and you forget it's there. Smart thinking. Percy laughed as Jason gave him a smirk. Where's your headband, Naruto ni? Udon's observation made all conversation stop. Naruto waited as Konohamaru and Moegi shifted their gazes to him as well. As expected, Konohamaru was the first to overreact. Holy crap, where is your headband? It's against the law to not wear your headband, he said looking like he was going to go into shock. It is. Asked the demigods. What? They cut a finger off if he doesn't have it. Ares mocked with a laugh. That's a stupid rule. More like an unwritten law, Udon corrected with a sniff of his nose as his brows furrowed. Most shinobi on their days off can get away with it, but for Genin it's almost required to always have it with you in plain sight. Well it's a good thing I'm not a Genin then said Naruto with a small smile on his whiskered face. Huh, you got promoted, why didn't you say anything? Asked Konohamaru with annoyance on his face. Here it comes, Hermes said, 
rubbing his hands in anticipation. I didn't get promoted, said Naruto, shaking his head. I resigned. Three, two, one, the demigods chanted. You what? The three teenagers exclaimed. People listening in on the conversation gasped in shock. Oh I love these silly mortals, Hades chuckled quietly. This isn't a funny joke, Naruto Onisan, said Moegi, scolding the blonde with a frown as Udon nodded in agreement. Konohamaru was still far too shocked to reply. His mouth opened and closed, but no words came out. Percy, gets that look at times, Annabeth pointed out, getting a pout from her boyfriend. Got it from his father no doubt. Athena nodded, getting a glower from her rival. It isn't a joke, said Naruto. The grandson of the Sandame Hokage faltered for a moment longer before he became angry. He stormed forward and grabbed Naruto by his jacket collar. Yeah, violence. Shut up, Ares. The gods rolled their eyes at his typical mindset. Bah, screw you guys. Tell me why, demanded Konohamaru. Why would you resign from the Kanahagakur no Sato Shinobi Corps? I have my reasons, said Naruto, who pushed the younger boy's hands away. Yeah, us. Leo smirked at the screen, getting nods from the others. That's bullshit. You wanted to be Hokage more than anything else in the world. You convinced me that there was more to being Hokage than just being the strongest ninja in the world, that you had to have the heart invested in protecting every member of the village. Well, it is safe to say he got your buried intelligence. Athena smirked at her half-brother. Apollo laughed dryly and rolled his sky-blue eyes at her joke. My heart belongs elsewhere, Konohamaru, I cannot devote myself to this village. I have been away seven years and in that time I have made new bonds that I have to protect. Hestia gave a smile after reading that line. I have a girlfriend whose life is set far away and is much safer out of a land filled with war nearly every other year. And why don't we have a place like this? Ares asked with a pout on his scarred face, hand pointed to the screen. Different dimension warhead, Apollo rolled his eyes. Ares just grumbled at that. I have found family that needs me. I have a mission higher than what the Hokage can give me. I want to make a Jesus joke. Leo struggled, it was so easy, it really was. I have a purpose that is forcing me away from here in the constant. Rescue, missions were going to cause more problems than they solve. Is that good enough for you or do I have to continue? Konohamaru looked taken aback from how Naruto said to him with a stern gaze locked on him. The grandson of the Sandame Hokage once more found himself speechless, as was his team. The three Chunin stared at him in disbelief. The way he said was with the same passion when he was talking about becoming Hokage. Got to love that demigod charisma. Talia smirked, as she glanced at her brother with a proud look. Jason looked somewhat sheepish after meeting his sister's glance. Konohamaru faltered for words, as did Moegi and Udon. Several civilians around them began murmuring worriedly and a few sent betrayed looks to their blonde hero. See, they'd drop you like a hat once you do the littlest thing they don't like, said Hades, scornfully. Naruto ignored the eavesdropping audience's mumbling as he kept his gaze on his, arguably, first three students. I wonder how we compare to them. Well, the us in the story, Annabeth questioned with interest. Oh we'd win, hands down, Nico smirked getting smiles and eye rolls. Their eyes were flinching as they tried to blink back the tears, he heard a soft hiccup come from Moegi, Udon's snot line. Oh us, they're what? In their twenties, Ares asked mockingly. Leave it be Ares, Hestia told him with a slight look. The war god conceded to his scary as hell aunt, which in all honesty was very concerning, maybe something was wrong with him, a chronic disease perhaps. Possible. The god of medicine mused. Seemed to have gotten longer. And finally there was Konohamaru, the, real, grandson of the Sandame and the first thing he ever had close enough to be a little brother. It hurt to see the look of betrayal in his eyes. Ouch. Jason winced. That was a terrible feeling to see. Percy nodded with him on that one. Look. Said Naruto as he steeled himself for what he was about to do. I don't have to defend myself to you. Damn right you don't, said Apollo. Tsunade has accepted my resignation and that's that. I'm resigned. I am no longer a member of the Kanahagakur Shinobi forces, sorry modern lingo. 
I meant I am not a shinobi for Konoha anymore. That's all I have to say. It was great seeing you all again. Ares gave a mock salute. Dismissed, you little brats, he snickered. Without another word he spun around and left the three chunin where they stood, civilians bursting into excited conversation as the three foreigners quickly followed after their hero. Some were dismayed that he was no longer a shinobi, others, who had put him high on a pedestal as some hero sent from the gods the irony. Irony indeed, was the chuckle from the gods themselves, oh those were the days when mortals didn't know who was their child or not. Hilarious. Wondered what was so important that caused him to leave the lifestyle of a shinobi behind. Some debated that he had grown tired of fighting. Boo. The war god jeered while cupping his mouth with his large hands. While others argued that he was brainwashed. Seriously. Annabeth asked. Wow. Come on. That was just plain dumb. I know. Leo frowned. Naruto led his girlfriend and the two younger demigods through the streets teeming with merchants and civilians that hadn't heard his exchanged words. They were silent as they walked unlike before. Jason and Piper had no idea what to say and preferred to just follow the older demigods. Talia occasionally looked at her boyfriend with a bit of concern, he told her of his misadventures with the Konohamaru Corps, playing games with them and having fun on his days off. Double ouch! Percy's turn to wince, even more deep that dagger went. The way he had left them had to have left some sort of wound, it was the coldest she had ever seen him act to someone, let alone someone he was close to, and she knew it was tearing at him from the inside out. Because he is that kind of a young man, the goddess of the hearth said softly, a smile on her gentle face. Finally, Naruto said as they came up on a large building that was about five stories high. It was shaped like an oval and had pale yellow walls with, you guessed it, red tiling for the rooftops. Naruto looked at the door with hesitation, like he was almost afraid of what could be behind the door. After what felt like forever, the blonde guardian reached out and opened the door. To his relief, he was met with silence rather than a giant welcome home fanfare. That would have been annoying, Talia chimed with a dull look on her face. True, Jason nodded. They were on a quest after all. He led the three other demigods to the staircase at the end of the hall, leading them up the staircase until he got to the top floor. Naruto stopped outside a door on the left and lifted up the floor mat, finding a small brand new key for the apartment that was rebuilt while he was gone. Seven years ago, I wonder who cleans it? Piper asked. His friends I guess, Hazel said. Welcome to Casa de Naruto said the blonde as he unlocked the door and pushed it open. The three demigods gave a small impressed whistle as they entered into a small kitchen dining area, their shoes making soft sounds as. Naruto hummed in interest. They rebuilt it down to the last detail. He opened the fridge and glowered. Expired milk included. Very funny. Ouch. Frank winced. He hated that stuff. Stupid dairy products. It says here in the annotation that Naruto had once ingested expired milk, said Hestia with a frown as she read the asterisk. Poor boy. I'll bet, said Apollo with a wince. That stuff is killer on your stomach. Poor kid was probably glued to the toilet seat. Ew. Talia scrunched up her nose as Naruto pulled the carton out and shut the fridge's door, shaking the milk and getting a lovely sloshing sound in response that had Jason and Piper mimicking the older demigoddess. That's a bit cruel to do, that isn't even funny. Piper said with a frown. Hermes was laughing, so he begged to differ. Naruto tossed the carton of milk in a bin next to the fridge. Jason took to looking at the few pictures on the wall while Talia began looking for where the dishes were kept to get herself a glass of water. Piper followed Naruto as he went through the door on the right of the entrance. Bathroom is in here, said Naruto as he walked past the door on his left where Piper quietly excused herself to investigate. You really shouldn't hold it in sweetie, Aphrodite said, making the room burst into snickers or quiet laughter. Mom, Piper cried out, her face red in embarrassment. Uck, why did she have to do that to her? Japanese cartoons depicted bathrooms strangely and she was curious. See, I just wanted to see if it was like an anime. Piper reasoned out, crossing her arms sternly towards her mother. Her mother didn't look apologetic at all. Naruto then opened the door directly in front of him and paused to take it all in. 
His bed was still set against the wall on his left, a dresser on the right, and a small television in the right corner near the balcony. His eyes widened as he remembered something and he went to the balcony doors, opening them and looking at the horse that stood patiently waiting for him. Zephyr, I forgot you were waiting for me. Sorry about that, said Naruto to the fiery horse with an affectionate rub on the neck. The spirit just whinnied and nuzzled his head into Naruto's hand. I love that horse, Apollo smiled. I don't. Oh you're just saying that because your other hates him. Piper rolled her eyes. No I'm not, said Talia stubbornly. Master is forgiven, said Zephyr. The blonde smiled softly in return and pet Zephyr on the side of the muzzle. The action earned a familiar chuckle that made Naruto stop petting his steed as Zephyr gave a whinny, both looking to the roof above them where a familiar one-eyed shinobi stood with his Greek book in hand. Most of the gods huffed at the book, it was hardly accurate. A boy and his fiery horse, said Kakashi. Naruto could tell that there was a wide and amused smile underneath that mask. The senior shinobi chuckled and closed his book with a snap. Why am I not surprised? So, Zephyr, god of the southern winds, right? Leo made a wrong buzzer sound. Actually, that's Zephyrus, said Naruto. He looked to his fiery steed and gave the horse another affectionate rub on the neck. Zephyr snorted and shook his head in response, insulted for being mistaken as the god. He was one of the three fire horses that pulled Helios' sun chariot across the sky. Helios, the first god of the sun, son of Hyperion, titan of light. It's argued that his birth created the solar body known as the sun, which my dad now has in his domain. Sweet car. 2. Oh forget the stupid car, Artemis said scathingly, honestly, it was always about the damn car. My car is awesome, you take that back, Apollo said to his sister with a pout. Ah, I see, so, Minato sensei was a god, yep. Trained by a god, feel honored mortal dude. The teacher of the mortal smirked. Inflated ego, Artemis muttered, getting a glare from her brother. But she looked as innocent as possible. Stupid child body, it really did make her look innocent. Well to put it bluntly, yes. Dad had pissed Raijiji, er, Zeus off for the last time. Bah, didn't work at all, Zeus frowned, why couldn't Apollo be a more sensible child? The Sky Lord tended to forget where he gets it from sadly. And as punishment he was crammed into a mortal form with his godly memories and knowledge locked away. When Kachin's seal broke and he was forced to seal the fox into me, he sealed away his memories of the life he had here. Your mortal self was dumb, the smith god told his brother. Hey, he sealed the demon in him, not me. It was still you. Oh go bang some metal, was the sun god's retort with crossed arms. The only action he gets, Ares said in an ugly laugh. Zing. Hermes laughed at the joke. When Nagato attacked, who? Pain's true name. Interesting. Sorry. Continue. Thanks. Like I was saying, when Nagato attacked the village my dad's mortal memories began to stir as I fell further into hopelessness during our fight. When my faith in my ability to stop Nagato plummeted to nothing, he appeared before I could do something suicidal. After we had a chat, his mortal aspect returned to their rightful place, Apollo's mind. That's why he suddenly appeared and took me away after being away for so long. Sorry about that, said Apollo. One would argue that he forgot about you. I honestly expected better from Minato sensei. Apollo gaped while Artemis laughed, her brother's own student ragging on him. Says the man who was always two hours late for anything. And he was a teacher. Athena questioned, well, it is safe to say he does take after his teacher. Artemis said, looking smug towards her twin. You are hurtful, seriously, you are. Apollo said with a pout. I was very busy, right, I was, he really does take after Apollo, Hermes snickered into his hands. Can it, host boy, I'm sure, humph, well, I didn't want to talk about me anyway. You want to know why I resigned, don't you? I assume it has something to do with your newfound family. Most likely that little muse you're dating. Muse she is not, Nico joked, getting a glare from the hunter girl. Muse, yes, that Talia girl. Ah, the dating advice time, Hermes nodded. Faye, I'd have given him plenty of advice. Apollo said with a smirk. 
The gods just had varied looks of horror at the comment from the archery god. Even Ares, and when Ares looks horrified, you know shit is real. Talia the Muse and Talia Chan are two different people. The Talia you're referring to had passed away centuries ago with her sisters. My half-sisters Apollonis, Cephiso, and Borstenis are the new muses, said Naruto. They are daughters of Apollo and Aphrodite. I don't know what brought them together and I don't want to think about it, so don't ask. Ah, it was fun. Aphrodite pouted. Apollo just had a winning smile on his face at that one. Ares and Hephaestus were not as amused. Can I ask if Aphrodite is as beautiful as the books say, said Kakashi. His eye was wide and hopeful. That's adorable. Little mortal man wants to know more about me, the love goddess mused, well, if he took off that mask. Slut, Artemis muttered, prude, ladies, Hera chided with a look, getting the two goddess to stop, for now. Naruto rolled his eyes at the question. She prefers to appear as what a man sees as beautiful or someone he loves, said Naruto. For me it was a mixture of both. Most of the love she took from were familial love, like Kachin's appearance and my Aunt Artemis' skin tone, and the beautiful features came from Talia Chan and Reina Chan, who is another friend of mine. Friend, right, Piper smirked, getting a mild glare from her boyfriend's sister. Sounds more like an ex-girlfriend. See, the man knows what I'm talking about, said Piper. Yes Piper, Annabeth rolled her eyes playfully. Don't push me, Kakashi-sensei. Sorry, I couldn't resist. So your Talia is named after the muse. Yes, that's right, what happened to her, the original Talia? That got some winces from the gods. The original muses faded away centuries ago. Faded, it's how a god dies by natural means. Oh, like how an old person's body just gives out. A good analogy. Athena nodded with small frown on her face. Something like that, it's more because of a loss of faith in them. Take Selene, Eos and Helios for instance, when the Romans took to the Greek pantheon, they couldn't afford all the same rituals that the Greeks did and the three titan gods faded away from a lack of faith. I see, so you can't kill them otherwise. Oh, trying to dig up dirt on us little man. Ares grinned, he wouldn't mind fighting these guys. Are you trying to? Better to be safe than sorry. Mortal be playing with fire. Leo whistled, dumb move dud, just plain dumb. That's not funny, sorry. Don't make jokes like that, Kakashi sensei. You'd think you would have taught him better, Artemis teased her twin. I didn't know about gods at the time, remember? Apollo said. I do, you just didn't. Oh, you are so immature. Hot meat kettle, guess what? Quiet, please. Hestia told them sternly, getting the twins to zip up. I won't. Was there anything else you wanted or did you want to try and extort more information from me? Said Naruto with a frown. And he is terrible at it, Hades said. Poseidon rolled his eyes. Please, not everything is about torturing information out of a person. Says you, was the sniffing response of eldest brother. He wasn't too pleased with that last joke. From the steam coming from his nostrils, neither was Zephyr. Indeed, Hera frowned, understanding the boy perfectly. Oh yes, Tsunade-sama wished to see you, said Kakashi with a snap of his fingers. Said something about having a good idea of what the disease was. Finally, Nico whispered, once they knew, they could save his sister. Then I guess we're going back to the Hokage mansion, said Naruto. He rubbed Zephyr's neck again. Go on back to Olympus, Zephyr. I'll call you when I need a lift. As you wish master, said Zephyr. Naruto stepped back and Kakashi watched as the horse turned around. Zephyr reared up on his hind legs and whinnied loudly before he shot off into the sky with a six-foot-long trail of fire behind him. There was a sonic boom that attracted the attention of the other three demigods, having them rush outside with weapons at the ready. There are those demigod reflexes. Percy said cheerfully. Well, Jason and Talia had their spears out at the ready, Piper had her dagger in hand but looked uneasy. No worries Piper, you'll get used to it, Talia winked at her as the daughter of love flushed at that. Her other looked silly being a total noob right now. Hey, you might get trained by Naruto, that's pretty cool. Hazel told her, Piper McLean liked that, very much in fact. Relax, 
Everyone relax, said Naruto, his hands up to calm the others down. Zephyr just took off for Olympus. I'll call him when we need him again. Now we have to go back to the Hokage mansion. Great, said Talia. She relaxed and held her spear at her side. Her other hand went to her hip and she scowled. That's another 30-minute walk through the crowded streets. You could use the exercise. Nico joked, getting slapped in the shoulder. I am perfectly fit, thank you very much. The hunter said in defense of her other. From sexercise, Apollo winked at her, getting a sputter from the hunter and a slap from his sister. Totally worth it. Not if you go the ninja way, said Kakashi, dropping from the rooftop to the railing. He gave the two newcomers his patented eye smile. Hello, I'm Kakashi Hitaki, by the way. I taught Naruto how to be a shinobi. No, you taught me tree climbing and how to be a good comrade, said Naruto. Burn. Leo snickered. Hermes just sent a knowing look to Apollo. The sun god didn't even give him a response, not finding it worth it. Same thing. No it isn't. Athena frowned. I distinctly recall asking for, and I quote, badass shinobi jutsu. Not tree climbing and getting an ass poke. So that's where he learned it. Percy and Jason muttered, almost feeling their other's pain. Unnoticed by the others, Jason shivered at that statement. Poor baby. Piper cooed teasingly to her boyfriend, who blushed lightly at her words. You had the cage bunch and no jutsu. Lucky. Annabeth whined with a pout. Touché. This is nice and all, but don't we have somewhere to be? Asked Jason. He had put away Julius's weapon form when he realized there was no threat but still had the coin in his hand. And my nervousness is perfectly understandable, Jason nodded to his other, he was in a den of assassins after all. Jason's right, said Piper. The sooner we get the cure for Bianca, the sooner we can leave and he can complete his quest. Yeah, I wanna get to camp. Piper smiled, and I want to show up already. Leo pouted with crossed arms. He wanted to meet his sibs in the heyday, not before the whole, curse nonsense came around. Plus Beckendorf sounded like a cool dude, he wanted to see his big bro. Right oh, charm speaker, said Naruto. Doubt we should take the scenic route, since Talia Chan doesn't like heights and I don't know how well Jason can fly yet. I could fly by that age. The wind boy pointed out firmly. You can fly, said Piper, looking at the other blonde. She's just waiting for her superboy, Leo teased his friend with a wink getting Piper to smirk back. It was true. Even Kakashi eyed the boy with interest. Jason shrugged nonchalantly like it was no big deal. For a child of the sky, Jason said, giving his sister a teasing look. Please, like flying is all that fun. The hunter scoffed. She didn't know what she was missing. Yes he can, but that's beside the point, said Naruto. He offered his hand out to the group. All right, Everyone take my hand, we're going to take the quicker route. We'll meet you there, Kakashi sensei. Instant transmission, Percy said, ah dbz, how you are missed. Talia was the first to take the son of Apollo's hand. Jason put his hand over his sister's and Piper put her hand over his. Ah, holding hands already. Annabeth teased Piper, who in turn shrugged. It was just the first step of her other and the other Jason to get together, she just knew it. Kakashi watched as Naruto gave him a wink before vanishing in the all-too-familiar yellow flash. The one-eyed shinobi smirked from where he stood and looked up at the bright sun. Hi me, he's definitely your son, said Kakashi. No doubt, was the unified agreement. Apollo nodded, pleased that they agreed. Now we wait and see if he still has most of your more redeeming qualities or if the terrible ones appear. Artemis said, getting the helium god to deflate. You are just plain terrible lil, sis. Apollo said, deciding to get his sister back with her hated nickname. Not the younger, the moon goddess grumbled. The jonin chuckled in amusement, disappearing in a cloud of smoke. The group reappeared outside the Hokage mansion. Piper groaned and grabbed her head getting a look of confusion from Jason while Naruto and Talia looked at her apologetically. Oh that sucks, Piper grimaced, remembering what happened when someone besides Naruto and a sky child went through the teleportation move. Sorry, Piper, said Naruto. Forgot that you might feel a bit disoriented. 
Funny since you area grandchild of the original Sky Lord. Aphrodite commented on tersely, getting a glare from the current Sky Lord. What about Talia and Jason? Piper asked. She rubbed her head and looked at the seemingly unaffected Grace siblings with envy. Why don't they have a headache? Zeus plays favorites, Hades said scathingly with a smirk. Oh be silent Hades, Zeus rumbled with a glare. My Horatian no jutsu goes through Raijiji's realm, the sky, so they don't have to worry about it, said Naruto. He put his hand on her head and closed his eyes. After a moment, he removed his hand. Nothing to worry about. Your headache is just a headache, so you should be fine in a few minutes. Drawbacks to the Horatian, Kakashi asked as he appeared behind Jason. Don't do that, Jason hissed in anger. Great, now he was going to reflex. The surprise made the Roman flip his coin into the air and after he caught it, a golden sword appeared in his hand. He spun on his heel before Naruto could stop him, making Kakashi jump back and away from the weapon that was swung in his direction. Not cool. Hermes frowned at Jason, who just shrugged. Shouldn't have snuck up on him. Jason. At Naruto's voice, Jason looked back at him to see the older blonde giving him a frown. Put Julius away. Now. Don't make me get the newspaper. Shut up Leo. Jason mumbled at the elf boy who was wagging his finger at the taller boy. Jason nodded curtly and with a small flash of light, Julius was once again a Roman gold coin. While the Roman demigod tried to calm his nerves, Naruto looked at Kakashi, who was eyeing the younger blonde cautiously. As he should, Zeus said with pride at the quick reaction his son had. Jason had a tugging smile on his face. Don't sneak up on them, said the blonde to his former teacher. Kakashi straightened himself up and gave Naruto his patented eye smile. I figured that out on my own, thanks, said Kakashi with a laid-back drawl. So, you can do the Horatian, but Zeus. Naruto nodded at the correct pronunciation of the name. Zeus doesn't let the children of other gods go through for free. Of course he wouldn't, too petty. Hades said, I am not. The king boomed. I let my kids bring other through shadow travel. Was the snide reply. Zeus had no retort for that one. As far as I know, my dad and I are the only ones that can use the Horatian without a drawback, said Naruto. Aside from his old bodyguards, but they have to work together to do it and were sworn to secrecy. How do you know they'll keep that secret? Said Talia as her brows knit together in suspicion. Naruto gave her a look of disbelief and the daughter of Zeus relaxed. Oh, right. Yeah, I'd know, the god of truth said in a smug tone. Helios would as well, said Athena. He was the god of oaths. Oh yeah, said Apollo. He blinked. Damn. Naruto really couldn't lie if he wanted to. Oaths and honesty, yeesh, what a combo. Yeah, I know, said Naruto. He gave a firm nod to support his own words. The blonde shinobi turned guardian faced the doors and pushed one open. Let's just go in, get the vial, and leave before this quest gets even more complicated than it has to. Bad words dude, just plain bad. Leo shook his head, something new was going to happen now. He and the three demigods went back up the familiar stairs and entered into Tsunade's office. They noticed two things once they did. First, Tsunade had changed her attire to wear red and white ceremonial robes, a large pyramid-shaped hat sitting on her desk with the kanji for fire facing them. Second, this time it wasn't just Tsunade within the room. Sitting at desks that were brought into the office, four more people sat three men of varying ages and one woman in her late twenties to early thirties. Oh my, he's the splitting image of his handsome father, said the woman from the far right. Why thank you, Apollo whistled to the image. She wore blue and white ceremonial robes, her matching hat set to the side. She had long auburn hair that was styled oddly to the demigods with the strange bun held at the top by a blue band. Two short bangs framed her left eye, with one covered her right eye while the green left eye leered at Naruto. Talia glared at the woman, deeming her a slut. Two more bangs reached past her chin and crossed over her impressive chest hidden by her ceremonial robes. She had on blue lipstick that went along well with her skin tone and her robes, the lips pulled back into a familiar smirk that sent a chill down Naruto's back and put Talia on edge. Ooh, a cougar, Aphrodite said with a tugging smirk, 
Best watch out Talia. Can't you once just say hello to someone, Mizuka Jdono? Said the smallest person in the room. A balding old man wearing brown and white ceremonial robes received a glare from the woman for his comment. He had a large nose, underneath which was a relatively thick mustache, a triangular beard came from his chin and large eyebrows jutted out like pale caterpillars, but looking past the stereotypical old man was a man of power. Looking into his dark eyes was a glance at a man with years of wisdom, power and grief. I take shits bigger him, Ares laughed out loud. You should have Apollo check that out, Hermes smirked, getting laughs all around. The war god just glowered at his younger brother. He scoffed after looking over the blonde and crossed his arms. To think, this brat is the offspring of the Kiroi Senku. He looks as threatening as a butterfly. I could kill you, you little gnome. Apollo sneered at the image. I agree with the Suchikage. How will he turn the tide in our war other than his blood? Asked the largest man in the room. Oh yeah, they still want his blood. Annabeth frowned. Her mother scoffed, the ichor in his veins have no doubt changed it. So it isn't a worry. He too wore ceremonial robes, colored white and yellow, but they were pulled taut around what had to be thick muscle. His hair was slicked back and stark white blonde. His hardened face had a small mustache of his own, a shorter, cleaner triangular beard jutting out from his chin. The four demigods were reminded of statues at Camp Jupiter by looking at this man. Now this guy, I like him, Ares nodded, he looked like a real warrior type. Don't let his looks deceive you, Rakage Dono, said the young man to the large man's immediate right. He wore white and green robes as opposed to his other counterparts. His skin was paler than average and around his two green eyes were very thick dark markings, indicating a sleeping disorder. Above his left eye was a red tattoo, a kanji, that could be seen beneath his unruly red hair. He is quite handsome, the love goddess commented, the tattoo was weird, but he did give off a calm handsome presence. That kanji means love, dite, Apollo told her, making her beam. Oh, he just became even more interesting. The young man stood and exited behind his desk, walking towards a dumbstruck Naruto with a small smile. It is good to see you once again, my friend. Gara, said Naruto. He returned the grin and the two friends shook hands firmly, representing their strong bond. Man, the years have been good to you. Not as well as they have to you, Naruto, said Gara as he retracted his hand. You look only a few years older than when you left. His mother's genes apparently, said Athena, recalling the explanation from before. Naruto gave a sheepish chuckle and scratched the back of his neck. Yeah, apparently my Kachin's bloodline flows strong in me, said the blonde to his friend. He then beamed. Oh, I've got to introduce you to the others. Nice kid, Apollo grinned, it was nice to know that his son had some supportive friends. Case Cage Dono, said the rakage. The two old friends looked in the massive man's direction as he frowned. We were brought here to discuss the case of Naruto Uzumaki, not to catch up over lunch. Well aren't you the Roman in the room, muttered Naruto with a scowl. The Greeks chuckled at that while the Romans smirked or in Jason's case, pouted. No, said Gara as he raised his hand to calm Naruto. Rakage Dono is correct, this is a serious matter we have to discuss. He went back to his seat and sat down, looking at Naruto professionally. Genin Naruto Uzumaki of Kanahagakur no Sato, Tsunade began. He retired. Apollo growled out, at least treat him god of the military and not like he was still someone the woman could boss around. You were abducted by an unknown force, the god force. Hermes snickered out, getting some laughs as well. And Mia for seven years, and only now on the brink of the fourth shinobi war do you return. After assaulting teams sent to retrieve and debrief you, nonetheless. Assaulting. They tried force, he defended himself. Jason frowned. I thought the war started, said Naruto. He dropped his own friendly face and turned just as serious as the five great leaders. And those teams had a primary mission that contradicted my own. Well, all except for Shikamaru Nara's team. Indeed they did. Artemis nodded. Hades giving one as well. Be that as it may said Tsunade. Her jaw was tight as she said, indicating that this was not her decision. 
The leaders of the Shinobi Alliance in all their brilliance want to know why. Why didn't you return in those seven years? Why did you choose to return now? Fuck you, that's why. Ares chuckled, but cowed after the glare from his eldest aunt. You don't seriously think he's a spy, do you? Said Kakashi after he had put all this together. Looking at his leader, Kakashi stepped forward. Tsunade Sama, I gave you several good sources of information. Gods. Fei. The Suchikage scoffed. What proof do you have that there are gods? Or that there are children of gods, for that matter? I think your village should stave off the hero worship for a while. Minato Namikaze was no god. He was a man. A dead man, for that matter. Everyone frowned that little man's words, ignorant fool. I'm right here you little shit, oh if I could just. Enough Apollo, Zeus told him, though he did not look like he was taking this any better. This Greek mythology is ridiculous, said the Mazukage in agreement. I wonder if my other can curse her. Aphrodite frowned, feeling vindictive right now. These lands in your books don't exist anywhere on the known map. That just means your world is bigger than you think. Athena rolled her eyes, the ignorance, honestly. Tsunade-sama, we went to those lands. Kakashi interjected. He has a point, said Gara in defense of the Jonan. Commanders of the other squads also report this, America. Who's not to say that there isn't another continent out there beyond our reach? Athena smiled with a nod. Finally, someone with an open mind. Our reason for being here is not over whether or not gods exist or if there are more lands to explore, boomed the rakage. He shoved a finger in Naruto's direction. The reason we are here is to know if he is with the Alliance or the Akatsuki. Large piece of, Apollo snarled, honestly, these arrogant mortals. I am not with anyone. This is not my war, said Naruto as his arms crossed. Yep, he has his own to deal with. Percy nodded. No way would they want to lose Naruto at a time like this. I have my own war to prepare for, one that concerns the safety of my family. You do not get to choose what is and is not your war, boy, said the Suchikage. The hell he doesn't, he levitated out of his seat and pointed at the blonde. You are a Jinchuriki, you are a weapon and you will fight. I want to kill him. Now, Apollo said in a calm tone, but his glowing eyes said differently. Reminds me of the old days. Ares commented, Mortals thought their kids were weapons of war, but you don't control them, nope, they were called demigods for a reason. And where did that get you with the Jinchuriki of Iwagakur, Onoki? Tsunade countered in Naruto's defense. The Suchikage, Onoki, scowled in her direction before sitting back down. Damn right you shut up, you little shit. Apollo said calmly, Artemis rolled her eyes, but she did feel her brother's anger, it was very understandable. Tsunade looked back at Naruto. You have to make a decision Naruto. I don't have to do anything. I came here because I thought you had a cure for the disease I gave you, said the blonde with a frown. If you don't then just tell me now. She'd better, Hades said in a grave tone, his black eyes having a deadly look in them. Not yet, but I can if you give me time. The disease is impossibly rare said Tsunade. The three demigods blinked in shock and Naruto gave her a piercing stare. As the other cage looked in her direction, Tsunade sighed. It was an old disease that was hopefully lost to time. Apollo frowned. No, it couldn't be, could it? One that doctors and physicians, even medical shinobi are skeptical of its existence. This one disease is said to have killed thousands with one drop and only fell out of existence after the Sage of Six Paths began teaching chakra. What is it? said Naruto with anticipation. He had to know now. What was killing his charge? Nico bit his lip in worry. It has no official medical name, but the legend about it says it came from overseas, from a land named after a mighty empress, said Tsunade. Oh so now they believe they have lands besides their own. Athena rolled her eyes, but this empress interested her. Looking at the blonde, she said a phrase that made him want to ball up in fear. A teen no ekibayo. Oh crap. Apollo said with a dropped jaw. What is it Apollo? Hades demanded sternly. Apollo just pointed to his wise sister, meet that land's empress. That got the room to freeze. Only one disease could do that and happened in Athens. 
The other ten people in the room looked at the blonde as he stumbled back from shock, as though he was physically hit with it, steadied by Dalia and Kakashi before he could fall over. Of course he would, the god of medicine grimaced, not even he could not cure it. In the back of his head he knew what it was, but refused to believe that it had come back. It was his worst fear come to life, a disease that many, even the Olympians, forgot about. I didn't, Apollo and Hades said in unison, one that his father never found a cure for. Thanks for the reminder, the sun god frowned, a disease that nearly ended the world in different moments of time. Oh the paperwork, Hades bemoaned, and now his daughter had it. How? Nico looked destroyed, his eyes widened in terror as Hazel held him in a half hug but it didn't ease his comfort for his dying sister. It went by many names now because of its various mutations over the thousands of years it existed. Bubonic plague was the most common. The Black Death was the most well-known. But the original form of this disease had no cure. There was no way to stop it. It was one of the most horrible things Naruto could ever hear. With a dry voice, Naruto managed to translate what Tsunade had said. The Plague of Athens. Nice to have your city in that name. Poseidon quipped. His rival snarled at him, the nerve of that sea-brained lout. Chapter End